What do you get when the world is in lockdown, everyone's working from home and not leaving except when absolutely necessary, and they're not out spending or dining at restaurants or that sort of thing, and just about everyone has $1,200 direct deposited into their bank accounts? Out of nowhere, an unusually high number of people have more cash than they're used to having. Even with over 20 million Americans losing their jobs, unemployment benefits are higher than usual as well. One of our core investing philosophies is looking for change, especially in consumer behavior. And at no time in our lifetime have we seen any kind of change of this magnitude. Today, we're gonna to talk about the companies that are going to benefit from Americans spending their stimulus cash. This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean. Streaming live on YouTube, we are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. Welcome to Dumb Money. I'm excited about this one. Where do you guys even want to start? And Chris is muted. Chris is muted. There we go. <laughs> on. <laughs> Dave. Where, where oh. do you want to start? I'm on my I'm on my last slide here, dude. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is what happens when uh, frantically before we go live. It's like four minutes until we go live, and Chris is like, "Oh, I have some slides I want to show," and he emails them over to me, and they're each individual PDFs, and none of the information is in them. It's like a header with a blank page. So he's he's putting together a keynote right now that he's going to be sending over. But are these are these stocks that are what, 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 what you, I don't even know what your slideshow is. All right, before we even get into my slideshow, which is pretty <laughs> awesome, by the way. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm, do, I'm doing like the last one right now, okay? But before I get into that, what I really want to talk about, oh man, now I'm all screwed up here, dude. Uh, what I, <laughs> shoot. Uh, what, oh, what I really want to talk about is uh, I'm down 600K today. Uh, That's what you want to talk about? Well, we, we, we haven't had. <laughs> that conversation in a long time, right? Like how long has it been since we've had a bad down day? That's true. Um, no, I, uh, Dave, I'm gonna wrap up this slideshow, send it to you, and I have one slide that I'm gonna have to have you pull manually uh, later. So I can't even save this. Dude, I've never done this. Oh, God, <laughs> on this, what do you have me do this on? Apple here instead of PowerPoint? Okay. I'm just having you make a keynote because PowerPoint right. is so 90s. Before we get into our whole show thing, Dave, can we just talk about why we're down so much? What just happened to Amazon? Did Well, did we should talk about, yeah, and, and the whole market is down. The Dow is down 600. The yeah. S&P is down. Uh, what do we got? 2.75% right now. Yeah, but, but let's talk about why. So Google came out, I think a big part of why Amazon's down so much is Google came out and essentially said they're giving away free listings. For any of y'all that don't know, we've had like 60% of our account in Amazon. I quintupled down on Amazon last week after quad quadrupling down on Amazon the <laughs> week before. And you know it's not paying off for us today. It has every day right up until today. But, hold on, this is quite a mess today for me, I'm sorry. This is what happens when you're down 600K in an hour, guys. You just kind of lose yeah. your mojo. So uh, Google's going to give away free listings on products. And I could care less about that as an Amazon investor. But that was enough to spook Amazon investors. And I think that is also kind of driving a lot of the other NASDAQ stocks down. There's other stuff going on, obviously. But that is definitely a big part of the Amazon move. Does that bother either of you when it comes to Amazon? Man, I mean, really. I feel like, you know, Amazon is a destination, right? And they generate their own ad revenue just from people searching on their site. Um, so I don't think Google knocking them down a peg is really going to hurt things, right? Dude, Jordan, that's, that's exactly correct. I mean, this is Amazon's up so much. You give any bit of bad news. And Amazon's going to get crushed on it like it just did. But it's an opportunity for people who are up as big as you are and I am to take profits. But instead of uh, taking profits, I bought more call options that expire in three days. And I bought a uh, half million dollars more shop, stock just directly. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so so I and, and gave... I'm already up uh, seven thousand dollars on that uh, <laughs> on those call options, and I can't. The way that brokers report your what you've done same day is so confusing. They're showing that I'm down eight hundred thousand in cash and up. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. Your intraday gain on the things you just bought today. I yeah. can never tell what I've done. Okay, Dave. What I did was we had so me and you had uh, rolled all of our Amazon options up to the twenty four hundred stock stock price. Uh, twenty four hundred strike price last week. We talked about yep. this uh, mm -hmm. because we took all of our profits and now we have cheaper options. And I quintupled. I went up to thirty contracts in addition to the 2,000 shares. So I'm essentially controlling 5,000 shares of Amazon. I just sold those, moved down to the 2,300 strike price Amazon yeah. calls, which are more expensive, but there's more upside for me back on the move up. And by the way, I got those when Amazon was down 100. Now it's only down like 60 something. So it's already working pretty well. Yeah, and we should talk about how that actually works though, because um, when you did roll out of those, you took a loss in those 2,400s, probably lost half of, the the premium on those yes yeah and then you bought new ones that were more expensive so you've you've essentially doubled down again on yeah. amazon yeah yeah it's essentially it's definitely doubling it's kind of like doubling down on my lever amazon position listen we're going all in this week on amazon uh but at the same time the amount of money we made on amazon which is well into the seven figures over the past couple weeks uh we have plenty of <laughs> extra risk capital to put into place for this event. And we've been talking, you know, when we're not doing this show, me, Jordan, and Dave are talking to each other all day, all night, and, and we're thinking about this. And we kind of made a decision that we're, we're, we're going to live with this bet on Amazon this week. And if Amazon comes down, we're probably going to use that downward pressure after earnings to level even deeper into Amazon post earnings. So we're willing yeah. to live with whatever happens this week on Amazon. We're, we're prepared for it. And so. even seeing Amazon down a hundred dollars made me want to just jump in and buy two hundred and fifty more shares. I, and I realize that's not a huge discount, but with our earnings coming up, Amazon's a stock that I want to hold long, long, long term. So yeah. even if they are beaten down, like you say, we're, we're going to jump in and buy more. Yes, e e exactly. Jordan, did you you've been talking about wanting to get into Amazon a little deeper? Have you did you pull the trigger today or no? Uh, I put in an order. It didn't fill because it shot back up. So I'm about to adjust the order. <laughs> dude, what is that? <laughs> what is wrong with you, dude? You what lost thirty points on the you? on the delay. Jordan, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to put a limit order one dollar uh, out of the uh, ask price. You just lost thirty dollars. Oh, and I mean, Jordan, I order, but... Jordan, just just pull the trigger, dude. <laughs> oh my God, you, you're trying but to meanwhile, like. Meanwhile. You know, so my portfolio is loaded up with all these obvious pandemic winners like Amazon, Shopify, Apple, Teladoc, Netflix, Roku, red, 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 red. Every every one of these stocks is down today. So there's profit taking. There's this negative oil price that has spooked the market. I'm I'm ready to take delivery of crude oil in barrels in my front yard now. I just don't know exactly how to do that. By the way, uh, we don't ever talk about oil on the show or energy because we're not energy traders. We don't talk about things that we don't know about, but we did I definitely place... don't know about it. I, I, I hear on CNBC that I actually have to take delivery if I buy these expiring May things that are ex expire today. I did make an oil trade. I made a trade. It's pretty interesting. And I'm not going to talk about it now. We're going to talk about it at the end of the show. Uh, but for you, if you want to hear about the first, maybe the first energy trade I've ever made in 32 years, I made it yesterday and we'll see how it goes. So I'll talk about that at the end of the show. I'm not an expert and, and I'm just rolling the dice on this one. Uh, yeah, but we'll listen, talk about that in the second half. Um, we'll, we'll try to do it in about 20 minutes. Yes. But we have more important things to talk about because, uh, gosh, I'm, you know, we delayed yesterday's show. I'm glad I had an extra day to do research, Dave, because this is just so important what we're talking about today. There's, is there, there's really nothing more important, I think, going through this pandemic right now than really focusing your energy on where all the money is going. Um, because yeah. if you could figure out where the money's going and where it's not going, that will present amazing opportunities, I think, you know, in terms of investment. It's a generational opportunity. We, we talk about this all the time. Like when, when do you in your lifetime get to see uh, – a market crash like this when mm -hmm. when do you get to see a recovery like this it's mm -hmm. 
it's not like you never you never hope for a global pandemic, but you have to be prepared for it and you have to make sure that your accounts are ready to go. You know, I talk about I used to talk, you know, I'm crazy when it comes to preparing, like preparing for events. For years and years, I've talked about preparing for a massive earthquake event in California and knowing exactly what you're going to go long on and short on in the event that happens so that if and when it happens, you can instantaneously ignite your California major earthquake trade, okay? And yep. if you don't, we should do a show sometime to talk about what that is for us. I'm not gonna talk about today because it's not relevant right now. But if you haven't spent a lot of time thinking about things that will absolutely are guaranteed to happen, it's just a matter of when, it could be 100 years or it could be next month, then you're not doing your job as an as an arbitrage. That's, we're information arbitrage investors, right? We, we, we believe we can trade quicker on information as it's evolving than anyone else. And the only way that we do that is we pre-prepare ourselves. We prepare our mind for any possible scenario and likely scenarios. We try to detect those scenarios when they happen. It's usually not big scenarios like this. Normally it's like a change in consumer behavior or a product getting hot, right? We're, we're studying social. But this is the methodology, and you have to do your homework. It's so I've been going nonstop a lot since our last show, doing nothing but researching opportunities, right? Yeah. And, and I think that yeah, that earthquake was another good example. We um, we put a trade board out on the original Dumb Money channel that the same day that we were making trades uh, on basically we we figured out a California a insurance company based in California that was primarily insuring California properties uh, and killed it. That worked out very well. For killed us. It. Yeah. Yeah. One of our best trades of the year, I would say. Yeah. I don't even remember the name of the company now. Um, Palomar Holdings. <laughs> Palomar Holdings. <laughs> I remember Can I'm we doing my taxes this year. It, it, it came up. Let's just get right into, I mean, I know a lot of people are waiting for us to talk about Ford and all the stuff we've been, we've been teasing, but let's just, can we talk about the one we most recently talked about? Because there's two sides to this conversation. I want to have it on air. Um, uh, can you pull up, Dave? The, I sent you the presentation. Could you pull up board Thank games you. for me? Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about toys. Let's talk about board games, okay? <laughs> you let, let's talk about... Let's talk um, about what everybody is doing when they're sitting at home. They are looking for something to do, something to occupy their time. What better than a seven hour game of Monopoly. Or um, a game of Clue or a Risk or Life. Or uh, how about together. How about playing with some, some arts and crafts are huge right now, like Play-Doh. Uh, you know what one of the hottest games in the world right now is? Connect Four, um, right? So we have been, oh, you know what I didn't send you, Dave? Oh, I texted it to you. This would be awesome for you to pull up that text. <laughs> Remember that text, the top three selling toys on Amazon? Can you pull, do you happen to have that? that? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pull up your slide here. Well, which slide do you want? These uh, they're just, the, just the board game, the board game slide. Okay. So uh, I should have brought it in to show you guys, but I actually, one of the first things that I bought for my family during the pandemic, uh, we were starting spring break and we were supposed to go to Florida. Uh, no, not Florida, the Bahamas. We're going to the Bahamas. We canceled the Bahamas trip, and as a replacement for going to the Bahamas, I bought the game Risk for me and my family to play. Isn't that a great spring break? Instead of Bahamas, I bought the game <laughs> Risk. It's an old school game. We all love it. Everybody loves it. Um, and so I wasn't the only one that went out and bought the game Risk or the game Monopoly or any of these board games. Look at this, guys. It's a five-year chart. Uh, search traffic for board games. And you see that last, every spike is the holiday season, right? But look at yep. the last spike. Wow. Reaching reaching all-time highs in a non-holiday time frame. Yes. You, <laughs> pretty, did, Jordan, have you guys bought any board games or anything? Or have you heard of anyone buying board games? Uh, yes. Yeah, so my neighbor is buying um, puzzles like crazy because they're trying to find something to do. And yes. Think, yeah. Dave, you probably probably haven't because you don't have kids running around the house at this moment in your life. But I have I have not bought any board games, and that's that's the one thing I feel about this trade is you probably already had a bunch of board games. I'm I'm sure that you've gone through them all by now, but 
Well, here's the deal. I think I have uh, every board game I possibly could want. When you've got young kids, they've got different types of board games now. They're not like one-on-one. You've got like, so our kids play this cooperative board game to where kind of everybody is against this one character. And so there's there's a, all sorts of neat things out right now. Yeah, and, and people love the retro stuff. And while you might have every board game, Dave, most people have thrown them away. And then when they have kids, then they rebuy them all, right? So here's the thing. There's a company that we all have heard of uh, called Hasbro. And I do have you, your other slide or your the text you sent last night. <laughs> okay, but before we even get to that text, they made a, a major decision a few years ago to kind of go all in and continue to stick with the old school physical board games and all that stuff. And it was like, kind of like, was it, is that a bad decision for them? Well, it's done reasonably well for them. It did well wow. for them in the in the quarter that they made that decision. Um, there was an earnings report where it was basically the thing that that put them over the top for that season. But the fact that they did reinvest in board games, and especially they have all these classic titles that that are the go-to games, I think it's going to pay off this season. Yeah. Well, do you think that would pay off in a pandemic where everyone's stuck in their house? Do you think? Well, and that's the thing that we keep talking about. What <laughs> if you could imagine which companies would be best prepared for everybody staying at home? The, the obvious ones come to mind. It's it is Amazon and uh, Netflix and uh, you know th- those those kind of what what to do when you're bored. So so Roku. so so here's the deal. They own all the big board games. They own like the top board games. The you know Risk and Monopoly and Life, the big ones, right? The ones that everyone's like talking about on Facebook right now. Like like I saw like people were talking about, oh, I'm playing Risk with my kids for the first time. I haven't played this in 20 years, 30 years. Like yeah. they make those games, guys. It's Hasbro and I guys. They have to be super high markup, right? They're board games. <laughs> well, and they, they not only board games though, but you this this Amazon bestseller le- list and the bestsellers in toys and games. This is uh, the screenshot you texted okay. last night. Number one, two, and three. Guess who makes Jenga? Guess who makes Connect Four? And guess who makes Play Doh? Hasbro. <laughs> they make all three of them, right? What are the chances? Those are those so, are good ones. Those are strong. They're really strong, right? So, guys, this is our one of our top trades that we've done uh, recently. Uh, I poured into Hasbro's last week. Ha- Hasbro stock, and there's a negative to this trade too. We'll talk about the negative, but Hasbro stock is still. They've recovered like fifty percent of their losses, but they're still like like fifty percent between where they were at their high and where they dropped to at their absolute low. So, you know, they're right in that zone. I, it, for me, I like the risk reward, but there is there you go. They're right. They're right, like fifty percent, right between their 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 high and their low. Yeah, looks like they were they they traded above one hundred and twenty. They dropped down to near forty, and they're at seventy four thirty three right now. But the risk factor is that only twenty per historically historically only twenty percent of their sales come from e commerce. Eighty percent of their sales, from what I understand, I could be wrong come from brick and mortar. And that is a potential big issue for Hasbro if they can't flip enough of those customers to buying from Target.com and Amazon, all these other places. Now, Jordan, you mentioned something yesterday, which kind of also I think is a big negative. Why don't you talk about that? The downside that I would see, so we've got small kids and basically you know, nobody's doing birthday parties right now. And so nobody's buying gifts, nobody's doing anything like that. They're just doing like drive-by waves. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that go down my block. That's yeah. it, and it's actually I love that. You hear these horns honking, you go right. see, and everybody's waving at their neighbors. It's great. It's kind of awesome, but not for the toy industry. Because like <laughs> no. you, you would buy a random present every time you go to a birthday party, which is kind of like every week when you have kids age four to seven or whatever, four to eight, three to eight. And now you're just not buying any of that junk just to pass around. So are they not that, driving by and throwing Play-Doh out the window or something? I, that's I what don't I would do. No, they, there's, there's really nothing passing hands that I've seen. It's all like you'll make a sign and maybe hang it out your window. Uh, so people that make signs to put in your yard, they might be doing okay right now. So families are still buying, I would imagine, e-commerce gifts for their family kids. Like you have a niece or a nephew or stuff. Obviously, your kids. Yeah. You're still doing that, but. There's not that excess birthday gift giving that that used to exist. So that's a negative. So you have to kind of make a decision here. I wouldn't say that I'm super duper high conviction on Hasbro, 
but I kind of feel that the risk reward is in my favor and the market's probably underplaying how well toy sales are going. And part of this, by the way, what really initiated uh, this trade for us and just the, the start of the research was I have a friend who has a friend who works for a big private toy company here in the US. And they evidently told him that as a private company, I don't even know what the name of the company is, they are doing holiday level sales of their toys, holiday level sales, which would sync up pretty well with what we just saw with the Google Trend search traffic. Now, the search traffic's a little biased because you have to imagine that these are people that used to buy toys in the store. Now they're all rushing to online, right? So you got to kind of factor that in. But hey, I mean, their earnings comes out on the 29th. And if they're even, Steven, I mean, I would think that they would pop, right? I, I would think so, but also Jordan, um, this is not their high season, right? Like this is not, uh, this is Q1, like this is not when they sell a lot of toys. So I think the reason why I'm getting into this trade is yes, you're right. People are not going to birthday parties and they're not going into the store, but they're really not going into the store that often to buy toys right now anyway in February, March, April where now they have a reason to purchase toys, grand they're purchasing over online. Yeah. So I like the risk reward of this trade. I, I didn't trade options. I'm just bought a ton of Hasbro stock and I'll hold it. Listen, I'm going to hold it through earnings. I don't envision myself holding Hasbro that long. The other positive, you want to have a positive for Hasbro, if you, you know, longer term is that uh, Disney, they have the, they have all the, they locked up all the big Disney deals at Hasbro and Hasbro wasn't able to properly monetize uh, Disney Plus's uh, Star Wars show, what's it called, mm -hmm. Mandalorian, last year because they wanted to yeah. keep that new, uh, mm -hmm. they want to keep it kind of a secret with a new figure and stuff. But this year, Mandalorian Season 2 is coming out in the fall. That should propel massive Mandalorian product sales into the holiday season. And Hasbro is totally prepared and able to monetize that with Hasbro Disney Toys. So there are some positive things happening at, at Hasbro that are well beyond this pandemic, but maybe not something that I would necessarily trade normally. And if you're uh, an investor, they'll give you three and a half percent at this price. So, yeah. Oh, you mean as a, div a dividend? Yeah, it's got a three and a half. I think. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's hard to kind of trust dividends right now, but yeah, I mean, if they can continue doing what they do, and I would. You know, if the brick and mortar loss of distribution doesn't disrupt their model too much, then that's something to think about. Yeah, it all comes down to does e-commerce work for Hasbro? Are people going to Target and Amazon and probably Amazon and Amazon over and over again to buy everything? Are they in stock? They are the best sellers. I mean, let's, hey, we're just going to have to see. And I also bought uh, Hasbro and looks like it's down a little bit from where we bought it yesterday. But uh, Dave, I, like the, I like the trade. I like the thesis. Dave, why I can't see comments because it says YouTube doesn't support comments on private videos. Is this a private video? How do we have two hundred people watching? Oh <laughs> no, people watching. Uh -oh. No, no, we have we have people watching. But uh, do you see comments? Hang on, let me. Uh, I'm not seeing them. But let's if you go to the uh, actual go to go to YouTube. In a browser, <coughs> guys. Sorry, we don't know if you could even see us right now. So, no, we have people and they're commenting. Can can you? Okay, but can you actually see our video if you were to watch it right now? Is it actually? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm. I can see it. Okay, I so hear myself you, in my ear. But you don't see their comments on the on the normal. Our, the, the platform we're using. It looks like there may be something wrong with the uh, comments coming in, but they're definitely on the uh, actual YouTube. So open YouTube in a browser, Chris. Okay. And then you can click pop out on the uh, comments and you can just have a little browser that shows comments. Pop out chat. Um, on my, uh, oh, you mean on your laptop? I'm just doing on it on my laptop. phone. Uh, okay, so there, there's my kind of first, there's my first idea. I mean, do you guys have any any thoughts, Any anything you want? Any ideas you want to throw out there? Because I have some more, of course. No, I have some more here. I'm, 
just just to prove that we're uh, actually live and we have comments, look at all this. We all see right. you. Yes, we can see it. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. But yeah, we're I seeing see the now. comments. But normally, we, the, the platform that we use uh, to switch cameras and such uh, so that we can pop the comments on the screen, normally we can show those comments on the screen. But for some reason, it's not coming through today. But we do have comments, and we will be uh, answering your questions uh, on the screen. Um, so in addition to this idea, did, did we have other ideas? Well, I have um, lots of ideas. Do you have any? You I have lots of ideas. All right. <laughs> uh, and one, one of my ideas is one that, that I've mentioned before and that it's a trade that, that we missed, but I don't think that we've actually fully missed it. Um, it's the first, it's, it's a, one of the first things that came to mind, uh, but it's not maybe the most obvious. So, it, and it's a company that I actually went online and was shopping from, uh, after being locked in my house. So it is Wayfair, the furniture company, the home decorating, they sell furniture, they sell fake plants, they sell everything that you might need. And uh, if it's everything except for what Amazon sells, it's the only other e-commerce play out there that, that has a unique differentiator that Amazon doesn't already sell. Dave, can you pull up uh, that slideshow I sent you, the word, the, the desk uh, slide? <clears throat> Uh, this is a great example of it. <laughs> Just the word debt. People searching for the word desk. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> look at that. Desk is at an all time high. <laughs> all time high. A five guys. year high for people searching for desk on Google. Yes. And so listen, it, and if it, you're going to buy a desk, where in the world are you going to buy it from? You're going to buy it from Amazon or Wayfair, probably, right? Or, or Wayfair's if you've got what you need. Or if you're fancy. If you're, the if you're I, fancy. I if you're fancy, you'll buy it from Restoration Hardware, okay? <laughs> um, so listen, we did miss most of this trade. We, we, we did. We missed the big bulk of it. And our, like, our strategy right here is we generally want to find companies that we think are going to do well in the pandemic, that people are going to spend their money on, that are haven't fully recovered, right? So you're still getting a discount when in reality, these companies should be trading higher than pre-pandemic, but they're actually trading lower. So those we think are opportunities. Wayfair, if you pull a three-month, Dave, I think, is it fully recovered or even beyond? It's, Wayfair it's, is nearly fully recovered. Fully although reco it's, it's down 5% today. This may actually be that buying opportunity that I was mm -hmm. hoping for because I think that this, here's a one-year chart. It's not fully recovered from where it was say August, July, June of 2019. It's yeah, been going down. Then we had a pandemic and now people are realizing that everyone needs a new desk and a new desk lamp and a new plant and a new couch. And yeah, I mean, listen, the reason why I am not buying Wayfair because it's it, to me, it's, it's certainly, it's more niche than Amazon, but it's too similar in terms of straight up e-commerce product uh, manufacturing, distribution, uh, distributing, selling. Also, way, you know, Wayfair is a little bit less of a destination. Uh, they, they still have to advertise on Google to get those clicks when people are searching for a desk. So if they go to Wayfair. Um, so is Amazon giving away advertising though now? No, Google. <laughs> okay. Google's giving away pro some kind of product search. But by the product. way, that whole thing with this Google, is, this is product search. Yeah, but but there's, you you can't give it away when they say they're giving it away. If you gave everyone away the ability to advertise your desk, that's just basically getting people to put listings into the Google engine. You still then have to pay for prioritization on listings, which is how Google makes their money. So I'm not buying this news story one, but I need to look into it more. Um, listen, Google, well, you know, I sold all my Google last week. I, I just exited all of it. I'm completely out of Google. Uh, I've talked about this. Major companies are pulling their Google advertising right now, and certainly most small businesses are pulling most of their Google advertising right now. Google has been sitting on a monopoly for 20 years. It's the majority of their revenue. Uh, I love Google. I think they've done some really good things in other areas besides search, but the reality is they've search is everything for Google, right? I mean, in terms of their revenue, in terms of their income, uh, and you know, playing these games, like they give away free listings or just trying to drive more people back to Google. They're suffering, I think, right now. We'll see if that plays out or not. It doesn't bother me with Amazon. Wayfair, Dave, I'm not buying it, 
but I love it. I mean, I, it's not a bad trade. I just, I feel like I have so much Amazon. I'm just going to, I don't want to like diversify that much. Yeah. If I, if I do want to diversify, I want to go to something totally different. And no, no, I agree. And, and I, I hadn't really done all of the research. You know, I know that they have some debt. I know that they have uh, a negative earnings per share. It's probably not a core holding that I'm going to want to have, but had, had I thought of it sooner, I would have been very happy. And I'm, I'm just curious as to what happens next. Does it, does it break 120? Does it break 140? I think, you know, I think any of that's possible, but you know what, Dave, I also I'm, I'm kind not, of think, I'm not yet in it. I also kind of think like, unlike Amazon, I think Wayfair and home furnishings, it's kind of not a one-time deal, but I think it's like an early pandemic deal. Like you got to get your office home yeah. office set up. You got to buy that desk. You got to do that stuff. And once you do all of that, not that they wouldn't still get sales, but I think that pop of buying home furnishings is going to be front loaded. And so that kind of bothers me a little bit with someone like Wayfair that's all about one thing. Well, it'll be interesting though to see they have earnings coming up. Um, this this pandemic happened in the middle of an earnings report and it looks like they have earnings coming up. I don't know the date around May 5th, 6th, something like that. This may be a big, a big earnings report for them. Yeah. The other thing that bothers me is that nobody is moving right now. That's uh, true. And, and I looked at my account. I actually um, placed an order for something for the bar, some, some furniture, uh, and, and I looked at the last time that I had actually placed an order on Wayfair and it was when I was building this house and needed some random yeah. knickknacks. Jordan, that's a great point because where Wayfair probably benefited from people setting up home offices and all that stuff now in like the, well, what's called the pandemic happens in stages, these yeah. next stages of the pandemic, they might not do as well with less people moving, right. And continuing yeah. to drive all, yeah. you know, those furnishings. Yeah. This thing. Uh, the one that I, the, the stock that I was looking at that might benefit is Home Depot. Um, yeah, and I, I doubled down in Home Depot last week. Talk to, I want to hear your opinion on Home Depot because like, although I did double down in it, I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm not like super high conviction Home Depot, but I feel yeah. pretty good about it. So like, what's your thought? Here's where I'm at. So um, I've got a little bit, I'm trying to decide if I want to buy more, but everybody's doing home improvement projects right now. Like you have nothing to do. So you're going to spruce and it's springtime. So you're going to spruce up your lawn, your garden, um, all that stuff. And um, uh, oh. I actually talked to a local Home Depot um, manager and he said that they're, they're doing a ton of business right now. Not did a manager, you, but just like part of their employees. Did yeah. you go in in person and speak to him? Uh, I was just having somebody drop something off in my truck. And just when I was talking to the guy at the garden center, he was like, oh, yeah, we're crazy right now. Awesome. I love hearing that. You know what? My pa Okay, first of all, if you could find a company that I haven't even looked at this, I'm sure that doesn't exist, that's public, that sells home garden kits, I swear to you, everybody I know has built a, a, one of those garden <laughs> boxes in their backyard. My parents even had told me that they could not find seeds on the internet and they were on a wait list in New York to buy seeds for their new home garden. Yeah. We built a home garden. My buddy Ryan Osborne has been on the show. He just showed me, of course he's a builder. He built his own home garden down in his ranch house, right? Lynn, I think just built, I think he just said he just did one for uh, his daughter. Like, dude, home gardens, like, in, right? Insane how many people are doing this. You're it's, right, Jordan. It's so like- the side would be that, um, you know, I don't think they're People are doing home renovation, pro like, you know, full renovation and like the home builders are down. Um, so I don't know how big of a portion that is for Home Depot. And I don't know that home building is down, though, Jordan. I, I, I don't know that they've stopped. Okay. Have they? I don't I don't know. I thought I thought they were I thought that was up. I could be wrong, but I thought that was continued to well, go I know, up. Well, I know we're like under we're undersupplied for homes. I just didn't know if they were building right now or not. Yeah. So one of the first thing Megan did when she. Uh, had this pandemic and started going stir crazy from being locked in the house for too long was go up to her rental property in Denton and she planted all of this herself. So she went to a Home Depot or a Lowe's, I'm not sure which, she tore up the whole garden and started planting. It's, um, I, I agree with this as everybody's doing it, but 
who knows if it's going to uh, pan out in their earnings. Um, by the way, Dave, I'm literally as as we're doing this, you got to pull up a five year chart on Google for Home Garden right now. It is great. It's up there. So basically, it peaks right now anyway. But there's an additional peak that's like it, it's basically up that just happened in the last few weeks. <clears throat> so home garden is way up as a search term, five years. Also, I think if you just look at Home Depot, uh, Home Depot is an amazing Google Trends chart right now. Just just Home Depot as a chart. Look at it, yeah, that, that, but that goes up every 12 months. So you gotta do a five year to kind of see the lift over what it normally does. There you go. Yeah, so there's that, yeah. you see that extra, extra lift right there in April, that's what we're talking about. And that's really gonna propel um, a lot of stuff for Home Depot. And by the way, we're, we're focusing on Home Depot. There's no reason why Lowe's wouldn't benefit equally. Yeah. It's just, it's just this, there you go. Look at that Home Depot chart. That is a beautiful uh, search chart right there. Yeah. Uh, Lowe's is just L-O-W-E-S. You're all about the theater, Dave. You're, 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 I, can, I can never remember which is which. <laughs> Uh, Lowe's is right up there, man. Yeah, they both have chart. a big spike at the end, <clears throat> and those are the terms people are searching for, not Home Garden. But but Home Garden also had that giant spike. Yeah. So Jordan, I'm in, man. I doubled down on my Home Depot last week. I feel good about it. Like it, it's a, it's one of the stocks I want to own. I think it will do well post pandemic. But yeah. I, it's where people are going to spend their stimulus money. By the way, I want to say it's not just stimulus money. It, remember, it's stimulus money. It's unemployment money. By the way, a lot of people who had no intentions to work, recently had a baby, recently retired, were just kind of in between stuff, are taking unemployment because they can, and they're making an extra, the equivalent of forty to $50,000 a year. I know plenty of people that are doing this in my network. It's insane. And then people who were used to be employed are now on unemployment making some cases twice as much money as they used to make on unemployment, which is insane. Some people are making three or four times more than what they used to make on unemployment. So there's the stimulus checks, there's unemployment when you had no reason to be getting checks, okay? And then there's unemployment checks which are paying you more than you used to make even through your regular job like waiting tables or whatever it happens to be. And then there's also extra money because you used to spend money on vacations and all this stuff traveling and gas and commuting and restaurants and now all that money has to go someplace so there's a lot of money like trillions of dollars from the government plus a probably you know a trillion dollars that you're not spending <laughs> right <laughs> and then you got to add that money and find new places for it so we're talking about where the money is going to go i agree home depot is one of those places games is another place i think we can agree on that um, Dave, I think, I think also furnishings. video games, um, you know, and I, I don't have the, the one, but it, you know, take two and, uh, EA and those, those kind of gaming companies. So my daughter has come to me, uh, three times in the last week, because I have to approve every time she wants to spend money on a game. Her and my son are playing Fortnite. Uh, they're, they're okay. you know, they're young kids. And she's asked me three times to use her spending money. Cause she has like savings money, charity money and spending money. I had to give her the money and take it out of her her spending account, and then she wants to use it to buy Fortnite bucks or something like that on Nintendo. So like that's all they're doing. So they have their game time every day, and they want to use. They can't use their money on anything else. So the yeah. kids are just like, I want to spend my money on like new outfits for the game or like new level ups and stuff. Why don't you introduce your kids to the idea of investing in the stock market as a game and then let them use real bucks and uh, buy some Amazon stock? I did. Remember, I did that. <laughs> and they are buying that. They, the, my kids are 100% in Disney right now, which I don't necessarily even think is a great idea, but that's okay. Um, they do. They have investing accounts uh, and they're doing that too, but they're not as into it as I like them to be yet. So, uh, all right, good. I mean, listen, three good ones. I'm in on the Home Depot. I'm in on my deal. Dave, I'm not going to do Wayfair, but I get it. I get, I get, there's like a positive and a negative to that. Uh, can we talk about toasters? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yes, you did actually give me a slide. <laughs> how many people are searching for toaster ovens? Okay. And, and, and that's right. Toasters. Uh, and and pull up that toaster slide because in addition to toasters, uh, this is I, toaster oven. 
I, now, I don't see, it, it, I don't listen, see it, a big spike it, it, at the end of toaster oven. It, it, there is a big spike there. And if you want even a better chart than that, Dave, pull up a chart for pans right now. Pans. Is that one of the okay. ones in here? Oh, no, it's not. Right. You got to pull it up okay. yourself. Sorry. If you pull up a Google trend chart on pans, that's even more impressive. The, the bottom line is people are purchasing small appliances, especially as it relates to cooking and kitchen. Why? I wonder why. We're not going to restaurants anymore. We're not spending any of that money. We're cooking at home. Guess what? Mon many of us are cooking at home for the very first time, but it, you can rationalize spending money on things related to cooking because all the money you used to spend at restaurants, now you have extra money to spend on cooking yourself, right? This makes intuitive sense. Look at that. Is that pans wow. or co oh, cooking? Whoa, cooking. wow. Yeah, cooking Recipe. is way, way up. But they spelled it. But pans is actually way more impressive than it looks because it's getting diminished on that chart day. But pans is a really nice chart in and within itself. Um, but there are, is a lot of money getting pushed into small appliances, toaster ovens, right? Uh, crock pots. I bet if you were to look at crock pot, I bet you that would be up as well. Um, so what's the trade? Who's the trade here? Um, the trade, I think, if you wanted to go with the trade, is Newell Brands. Newell Brands uh, used to be called Rubbermaid. And we last traded this company, one of our most famous trades of all time, the Elmer's Glue, which is a subsidiary of Newell Brands, the Elmer's Glue trade on a DIY slime, which was a few years ago. We were one yeah. of the very first to call the DIY slime trend. A lot of hedge funds that were clients of ours uh, when you were telling me trend. about this yesterday, I couldn't remember where I had heard of Newell Brands before, but it was the slime trend, and the, they are the parent company of Elmer's Glue. But look at look at this chart. Is this what? This is a so, five year chart. So the question about Newell Brands is: I have not done the research yet to figure out why they haven't recovered, and I will not buy Newell Brands um, until I get more comfortable with the negative piece of this story because obviously people are not buying into this story yet. So there must be something, listen, Newell Brands makes a lot of stuff. And I think there could be a thesis here that too much of their stuff is sold at Macy's and sold at JCPenney. It's just random appliances, right? So I kind of get it that people are like, you know what? The, the, too much brick and mortar, not enough online. And I, I get it, it makes sense. But if you believe that people are replacing online at a bigger clip than brick and mortar, then Newell Brands is worth a look, right? It's worth a look. I haven't traded, I'm not buying it yet, but it should be on your radar. Let's look at some of their brands. Look how, look how big this company is. So they, they are Sharpie, they are Expo, they are Elmer's, they are uh, Mr. Sketch. They do, no yeah. So the Reynolds. They do, they are Sunbeam, Oyster, Mr. Coffee, Crock-Pot, Cafalon. So another Elman, thing, Bubba, Ca wow. they could be getting hurt. Uh, I bought all new pots, but I bought new pots because I saw that movie. Jordan, what's the name of the movie uh, with the pot? Dark Waters, is that it? Dark Waters. Guys, if you haven't seen Dark Waters, man, oh, it is the greatest movie. It's all about um, the stuff that they put on pots that gives you cancer, essentially, that whole legal case back it's in the day. Teflon, yeah. They've changed, they've, look, they've changed the formula since those days, and so I don't think it's as harmful anymore. I still don't use uh, it. Oh, it's an when, unknown. When did they switch over? I might need to go check my my pan. Uh, no, no, no. Let me tell you something. You 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 scratch that stuff and chip it. Nobody can tell you that's that new stuff is is safe. I don't trust it. Not even you watch the movie, Dave. I guarantee you, you will take all of your pots. Throw them out, and I will tell you what to buy. Scam pan, as Jordan li likes. Well, scam pan. It's ceramic. It's still non-stick, but totally safe from it's a what I understand. Titanium and ceramic mix that it creates a non-stick layer. So we yeah. use it for our non-stick, and then I'm a big cast iron person, so we use cast iron. Yeah. So I, I, I have cast iron and Teflon. A nice, a nice mix of healthy <laughs> and not healthy. Yeah. Listen. The the, the 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 moral of the story is I'm not. I haven't bought. Newell brands yet. I'm going to do more research on this week, but it's certainly a sector where I think I people are absolutely spending money on small appliance, on pans, on toaster ovens. That's something that's happening. Now, will the loss of brick and mortar distribution be too much for them to replace? That's something we have to figure out. 
is some of the other categories that Newell Brands is in. Like they have a lot of, they make a lot of pens and markers and stuff like that. And this like an education market that will get destroyed, obviously. So you have to kind of balance that stuff out. But I think it's, I think it's worth a look. Uh, okay. Uh, can I talk about, oh, this is a big one. Jordan, I'm going to let you talk about this one first because this is like your thing. Uh, this is literally your thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, what is your thing more than anything? Cycling? Yes. <laughs> what have you seen in cycling? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went and um, I got to be quiet, but I went and picked up a bike for my daughter's birthday. And I <laughs> my, uh, my guy at my local bike shop. I hope she doesn't have YouTube. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the guy at the lo my the guy that owns my the local bike shop that I go to told me that basically they're out of control right now. Like when I walked in, they had fifty boxes of bikes because that they ordered because they have no place to store them. <laughs> they're just building bike after bike. Dude, Jordan, you're not kidding. The five times that I've left my house during the pandemic, I drove by the bike store because it's just like right on my way to get to other places line out the door line out the door for bicycle it's insane is that it's, is that one in snyder plaza open yes yeah and, and not no, only that businesses right so they're open i i love these trades uh where like i don't even think a lot of people that are you know in institutional traders in the northeast it's too cold for them to see how big this trend is right now because in their neighborhoods they're not seeing it so like they are biased, and that's a geographic bias that Wall Street has. I've talked about this for 20 years. Some of my biggest trades have been arbitraging geographic biases that Wall Street has in general. Uh, so they didn't really, I don't think they're seeing this trend as clearly as we are. Unfortunately, there's not a really good way or an easy way to monetize this trend because there's no publicly traded bicycle companies, to my knowledge, if any of our viewers can find a, someone in the supply chain of bicycles that is publicly traded, I want to know. So, um, a, so yeah, I looked a little bit more. There's um, there's a few, but they're not great. So like Fox um, suspension or Fox factory makes uh, the suspension stuff for bicycles. Who's Fox factory? Like Fox race, like uh, they make like uh, they make forks and they make um but they also make like suspension for cars and like racing cars and stuff like that yeah, okay fox racing oh, yeah, yeah okay so but th but that's that's uh okay got but more downside than upside on the bikes like, on the bicycle side so i don't i wouldn't jump into it right now okay gotcha it's interesting though it's interesting it just depends on if the, you know how if it's a needle mover for them you know what the percentage of their business compared to cars and racing and stuff yeah, I don't, I don't know the breakout. Uh, but I think in general, there is, ironically, like a lot of uh, interest in sporting goods. Uh, that said, you can't really buy any sporting. You're not going to go to Dick's Sporting Goods uh, store right now. Uh, but they're potentially, you know, but certain types of sporting goods, because people are, it's like toys. Like, right, it's the same thing. It's like people are trying to figure out how to get their kids active right now. Um, I'm going to tell you my trade here. Uh, it's to nobody's surprise. It's related to bicycles. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I could, I could, I couldn't find a bicycle trade, but I kind of already have a bicycle trade. So I just doubled down in my best and biggest bicycle trade Peloton. All right. Peloton, Peloton is my yeah. bicycle trade. So, um, now listen, there's a reason why everyone's waiting at the bike store because people want to be active. They want to go out and do things that they ordinarily never had time to do, ride their bikes outside. But mo a lot of people can't ride their bikes outside for numerous reasons. They live in a city or it's too cold um, or they just don't want to. So they're, they're doing Peloton. We all know it. Peloton's crushing it right now. But you know what? The thing about Peloton came down a little bit the other day. Are they probably down today again, I would imagine, because... Trump and the administration came out and said, we think that gyms should be wave one to reopen, tier one. Like the first wave of reopening should include gyms. Why did that happen? And, and why is that? I'm that, suspicious. Which is the biggest 
scam ever. <laughs> yeah, like the I guess the CEO of like Equinox is on uh, the uh, the mm. administration's advisory committee for opening the country back up. So I wonder if that had anything to do with it. Um, I'm sure it probably did. Uh, but listen, I'm not buying it. First of all, I'm not buying that states are going to allow gyms to open. Now, I know Georgia is. Georgia just announced that today. Uh, but besides Georgia, Georgia is, but the mayor of Atlanta is saying this is crazy. We're not we're not going to do that. Well, like I said, I don't think I don't think New York or California or Michigan. I'm not, I mean, excuse me, not Michigan or uh, Illinois. I think there's a lot of big states that are going to be like, no, we're not going to allow our gyms to open up quite yet. I think Peloton is going to have multiple more months of amazing traction. But the biggest thing for Peloton, this is what we talked about, guys. The biggest thing that I think is interesting, because we all know the Peloton sales are going up. But what no one's talking about is that I think, and I've researched this, and I, I seem to get consensus on Twitter from what people are saying. I think that Peloton marketing is going down. Yeah. Meaning that they are basically put a stop almost or, or massively decrease their marketing dollars. So they're in the middle of a pandemic and everyone they're, they're I heard it's triple, triple the time to get your Peloton than it normally would take. Really? But why would they spend money on marketing right now if they cannot even handle the demand that they have? So one of the biggest knocks against Peloton was that they had to keep pushing tremendous marketing dollars out there to get to acquire new customers and it was going to be just too expensive to continue to acquire customers at such a great marketing cost and if they're cutting their marketing have you seen a peloton commercial in the last month no have you seen an ad on facebook no, instagram I see them all the time like all the time you're still seeing the ads no, well, I, he, you're being you're being retargeted probably because you've been on their side. No, he's saying he hasn't seen him. He used oh, to see him all the time. Yeah. So uh, listen, that is a big, big deal. If Peloton can come out and say, not only are our sales through the roof, crushing it more than we've ever seen, but on top of that, we've been able to essentially eliminate the marketing cost. Yet that's the cost of acquiring a customer. And if you watch our main channel, Dumb Money, which is we haven't filmed it in a couple months because of the pandemic, but our main channel, all we do is our startup investments. And we've invested in 60 private companies almost. Uh, and we always talk about cost of acquiring a customer. It's the most important metric, cost to acquire a customer at scale. And that was the biggest knock on Peloton is that it would ultimately, once the low hanging fruit went away, it would be too expensive for them to continue to, to acquire customers uh, at scale. And if they, if this pandemic is going to give them a whole year, maybe of not having to market. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're top of mind already. And they're not having to spend money to remind you that they exist. <laughs> and uh, you don't want to go to the gym and the few gyms that open are going to uh, have a machine in between is what I heard is the, the new uh, s slogan for, for gyms. So Half they, the machines are going to be uh, vacant. Have you guys seen though, Dave Jordan? Have you seen uh, like those the Japanese? Like they do these animations of like in test labs of people spit basically in a in a room and how far it goes and how long it lingers. Did I don't see the Today Show this morning. They had no. they had the uh, sneeze machine where they had uh, I think Kerry Sanders was standing there. But they had a laser beam shooting through it, and they put they pushed the sneeze machine. It went twelve feet in about. 30 seconds. Oh my goodness. So that's six foot distance. I'm, I'm not going outside. <laughs> no, you want to go outside. You don't want to go inside is yeah. the thing. I don't know. Have you said, if, if you have the strong breeze carrying it even further. I'd rather have the breeze like dissipating, like, like spreading it out. Versus you, like the thing about the pandemic so far is that uh, we're, my family takes walks every day. I love it. We go outside. Well, we, Walk. Yeah, we're taking walks a lot too, but I'm keeping distance even outside when I see sure, someone yeah. coming the opposite direction. Luckily, my uh, my dog is antisocial anyway, and when she sees someone on the uh, on the same sidewalk, she juts out into the street to go around. So now we just cross the street whenever we see someone on the block. Um. Okay, so I doubled <laughs> down. I doubled down on my Peloton. I also because I'm not buying the whole gyms are coming back and everyone's yeah. gonna be in a gym next month. I, sh I, I shorted, um, what's it called, uh, you know, the gym. 
the public gym. Oh, uh, Planet Fitness. <laughs> Planet Fitness. You know, even though I have, and I won't say who he is or where he used to work, I have a, a, one of my neighbors is a, one of the biggest gym, former gym executives in the, in, in the world. And he told me that, he, you know, they're actually positioned pretty well over there. They're, they're run very efficiently and they're positioned well to come out of this. And, and especially if retail mm -hmm. goes under, they'll be able to buy lots and lots of new gym space for next yeah. to nothing and expand really rapidly if we get out of the pandemic. And I get that. I, I agree. But I just don't think people are going back to gyms right now. And Planet Fitness, they can't charge your credit card if they're not open. So every month that they're forced to be closed, they can't charge your credit card. Even though it's only 10 bucks a month, it's like 10 or 12 million people. It's like 120 million bucks a month. Uh, and I know they have some pre-pay pre -pay plans, but anyone that's not on a prepay plan, they're getting extra months added to the end of their membership, but yeah. everyone else is just not getting charged. So yeah. that's zero revenue in addition that they're getting every month. And I, they've come back so hard, Planet Fitness, they're like within 20% of their all-time high. I like the risk reward. I like it. I, I, I'm shorting them. We'll see what happens. And I'm, I'm long Peloton. So I like that long short. And here's uh, the chart, if I can pull it up, of Planet Fitness and their their comeback story. Yeah, I actually also uh, bought some puts on Planet Fitness. I didn't want that uh, unlimited downside if they happen to go from 50 to 100 again. But uh, I bought I bought some puts. And I'm yeah. up in those. I just bought those yesterday. Um. Something that just came to mind, and I this wasn't on my list, but when you think about what are people doing instead of going to a gym or buying a Peloton, what is that 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 VR helmet that uh, that Lynn has that I used when I was on his boat? Oh, because yeah. that is a Facebook. great workout. Is that is that Facebook Oculus. that makes that one? Oculus, yeah. But then here's the problem. Okay. I mean. Awesome long term for Facebook. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm not even sure if they make money on them right now. Uh, I don't think people are looking at Oculus sales as a, a needle mover for Facebook. So probably a non-starter there. But is there and, another company that makes a similar uh, product? Not Samsung uh, makes it, and so mm. like no, there's no not, there's no niche player. That, there's no that niche players who okay. are public. It takes so much money to keep those things current. Uh, the problem, Dave, is also, you know, Joshua Bayer at Capital Factory, he tweeted the other day. Tweet. Yep. He was annoyed. He's like, no one's talking about VR right now. And His tweet was something to the effect of, if you can't get someone to put on a VR helmet during this pandemic, you're never going to get anyone to put a helmet on. Look, I've never been a big fan of the whole thing. I've, I've always thought it's kind of gimmicky and... Um, I, it was so it's so much fun to do, and uh, Megan was trying to get me to buy one, and I think I'm going to right now. I, I didn't realize it. it was Facebook. I love it, love it, but I will say it. I think I think VR is one of those things that will take way longer to become become widespread than anyone anticipates. But once it happens, I think it's going to be one of those things that's way bigger than anyone ever anticipated. It will take way longer, but be way big. Kind of like flying and, cars, Dave, which you love, I know. Well, <laughs> when, when flying cars are a thing, I'm very excited about that. But I think that we will have a unique perspective on VR if and when it ever becomes a thing because your little brother is like a preeminent expert in the yes. space, right? Yeah, he, he, he's been in VR. He exclusively is working in VR for 10 years. He wears a headset like 60 hours a week for his job. Um, and yeah, we'll, 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 have the, we'll have the inside scoop there for sure. Make sure you subscribe to uh, get the insight on when <laughs> VR becomes a thing. We will, we will be, uh, we have the expert to go to. Absolutely. Oh, and while you're at it, if you haven't done it yet, if you haven't smashed that like button, now's the time. I got to, I got to throw that animation on. Um, can I want to talk about one that uh, where people are not spending their money right now? I think people are not spending their money on two things. Uh, one, even though I saw an article that said the opposite this morning, I'm not buying it. I think they're not spending their money on uh, luxury fashion. Uh, and I think they're not spending their money on uh, makeup, okay? So I would not go long Ulta here, which is a stock I've traded quite a bit in the past. Mm. Ulta yeah. is one of those companies. They, they were up, honestly, they were at like the upper 300s uh, last year, Had a, did, came all the way down to the upper 200s, were kind of 
close to 300 before this started, and now they're at 202. So I just I want I'm going to stay away from Ulta. I just don't believe that anyone has a need for makeup right now. Uh, I know there's a lot of girls. Ulta sells other things. What what is the? Do you have any idea what their mix of e-commerce to in-store? Uh, well, Ulta is actually really good at e-commerce, but they do a ton of in-store as well. They, they do have a healthy e-commerce uh, platform. They also have one of the, the biggest loyalty program uh, in cosmetics. So I, I don't hate them necessarily. I just don't love them here. It's like an area that I'm just not, I don't see enough fire behind it to, to yeah. want to like get, get behind that move to, to, to bring them up in a, in a crisis like this. Same thing for luxury fashion. Who's going to spend money on fashion when you don't know if the fashion will still be in fashion by the time you're able to leave your house and do anything? Because the- well, well, I don't know that there's going to be anyone buying fashionable pants, but I think that for your uh, waist up meetings, you might still buy some like luxury brands to uh, to wear for your Zoom meetings, right? I mean, you know, the biggest things are the <laughs> and things like that, and those aren't flying off the shelves right now. Wait, like, what is that? Uh, what is that, uh, Jordan? I'd be more. I'd be more worried about like shoe sales and uh, like purses and handbags. I just don't see anybody needing to grab something like that right now. Yeah, there was out of China, that that was like um, one of the that was like a big go to item for all the people that were getting out of quarantine to like go buy those items. Um, what shoes? Yeah, like luxury, you know, shoes and purses and things like that. Maybe when we're out of it, it could be a nice rebound, uh, you know, potentially good rebound trade. But like, we're not. I I have my rebound trades, and there there are companies I think that can triple. Like, you know, we talked about in the past episodes, the Winds, the Royal Caribbeans. Yeah, well, I'm not going to uh, go here. Here. right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not interested. But let's here's, talk- here's the uh, chart for LVMH on the Italian exchange. Yeah, um, they've they've also done the bounce and seem to be uh, halfway recovered, a little less than halfway recovered to their all time highs. Yeah, so like that's and what that's we're in talking euros. about. There's a, there are a lot of companies that have kind of recovered halfway. What we need to decide is which of those companies are on the right side of where the money's going, and which are on the wrong side of where the money's not going. At least for the immediate future, that could certainly change. But on the immediate future. You know, again, game. We talked a little about about gaming, Dave, uh, and I think gaming is absolutely one area where the money's going. Activision is one of my big holdings. The problem with Activision right now is it's like trading up at highs, so there's not a tremendous amount of you know opportunity to recover on the easy money in Activision. But yeah. I think Activision potentially has room to go higher. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't still own it. Uh, I, I I love them for short short and medium term here, especially with a refresh cycle later this year. And look uh, look at that they haven't they haven't really been affected at all. I mean, so they, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about their I'm gonna talk high. about one no. one yeah well, yeah you're right. I mean, they still have room, they have room to grow. They have room to grow. Yeah, 2018. Those 2018 is that's when they came out with the Fortnite competitor day that everyone thought was gonna pop yeah. up there. So let, here's another thing, guys. Uh, here's a sector that I got information on, I think we might have mentioned this, uh, from a VC uh, friend of mine who has uh, a private company that is pretty big uh, in the cannabis sector, but not growing cannabis, actually uh, digitally tracking cannabis sales, basically, a portion, a representative sample set of cannabis sales. And he told me that cannabis sales were through the roof this past month, like in in North America, like the U.S., okay? I don't know about Canada. I don't know about other places, but the U.S., and I assume it's the same everywhere. So it looks like people, in addition to spending their money on, you know, uh, small appliances, on games, on, we're going to talk about this in a minute, laptops and electronics, right? Uh, They're also spending their money on weed on, on cannabis. And I don't, I don't trade a lot of cannabis stocks. I don't really have a top pick there. I don't know what I want to do, but I do think that that is an area where people are spending their money. And if you do understand that world uh, and you're, or if you've been, maybe it's something to look at deeply because I I think they're now the negative of course is the next president, no matter who it's going to be right. Trump or Biden, neither of them are pro cannabis. So that's kind of makes for an ugly next four years, right? Yep. 
Well, but Canada's stocks have been hit so hard. This is Aurora. Yeah. And it's, oh. you know. Yeah, they're getting, listen, they're getting destroyed because they have structural issues with these companies, right? Yeah. Um, they have structural issues. They have funding issues. They have all kinds of issues. That's why I'm not jumping into the sector because I actually do have one guy who I lean on for all my cannabis uh, advice. I'm going to ping him today and see what his top public cannabis picks are. And maybe I'll talk to talk about them on our next episode. But, you know, I'm not just going to jump in there without really understanding the market because it's been a long time since we traded cannabis. Uh, what else? Oh, by the way, our biggest one that we talked about multiple episodes, I still think it's it's worth a talk. One of our followers actually left us a comment this week. I don't know if you guys saw it saying that there was a line, a huge line outside of Best Buy because everyone's buying TVs and electronics. Again, think about all these people who are getting checks and they are just flush with cash. I have a bartender, I think, in my restaurant or a waiter who is, you know, we're trying to hire back, but he told us that he was making so much money in unemployment and they were gonna, the federal government was gonna back pay him for uh, for for money that either he didn't get since the restaurant closed, he was going to have thousands and thousands of dollars in his checking account. A lot of these people are going to go out and buy things they've always wanted, but really couldn't purchase before, like a big screen TV. Because what are we doing right now? We're watching a lot of streaming services. So if you yep. don't have a big screen, listen, we all know a lot of people went out and bought big screens the last year, two years. But a lot of people just simply didn't have money. Now they're getting a check for a thousand, two thousand dollars in the mail. Plus, they're getting their unemployment checks. They're making more money than they ever have. They can't spend money going out to bars at clubs. They got all this money. They want their big screen. They're gonna buy their big screen. They're gonna buy their lap book, MacBook. They're gonna buy their uh, iPad. I'm getting a new iPad this week for because I'm such junky quality on these shows. I'm gonna <laughs> buy my um, uh, iPad Pro. Hopefully, it'll improve my quality next week. But this is. A big, don't you agree? It's a big segment people are going to be spending their money on electronics. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah, and Best Buy, you know, would, that that wouldn't be my first choice. I would I would be buying my television from Amazon, and I yeah. bought my I bought my big computer monitor that's over here from Amazon or uh, I think B and H Photo actually because yeah, Amazon was delayed. People, like they want to get it right away. You can just go and buy it, right? Yeah. You yeah, know, kind of getting damaged in shipping, and then you got to return it or file a claim or something. You just pick it up. You can see the undamaged box. Listen, I didn't buy Best Buy because I don't like Best Buy, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I'm sticking with Amazon. But I will have to. I do have to say they could come out and surprise everybody this quarter. Best Buy might come out and surprise everybody with you know numbers that because we're not we're not in a holiday quarter. We're in a quarter when they're generally not selling that much stuff and all of a sudden people want this stuff so they could come out and surprise i think it's worth taking a look at it's definitely an area that i think will do really well in terms of where the money is going it's going into electronics and computers by the way, by the way computers right like yep. a lot of people we don't buy our computers from best buy but a lot of people do okay they have a big computing session uh, computer section at Best Buy now. It's like a quarter of the store. So they have an Apple store within the Best Buys. They do and they, other stores. Inside of Targets, they have an Apple store now. They do. And and a lot of this Apple merchandise is getting hard to get right now. So like anywhere where you could find it, you might just get it. I'm having to wait like a week and a half for my iPad to come in. Apple, uh, buy some Apple stock. <laughs> you know we we already doubled down Apple. Doesn't look good today. I'm going to try not to check my account, guys, for the rest of this episode. Because uh, every yeah. time I look at it, it's just uh, depressing me yeah, more. Yeah, it's not good. But, um, okay. Oh, all right. Let's talk about the can we talk about the big one now. The one that we've been talking about for the last week, trying to figure this deal mm -hmm. out. There's two sides to the story. It's not like an obvious pick. But I, I think there's a potential to double your money if you're right on this one. Yeah. Um, oh, and there's, I need you to, I'm sorry to do this to you, Dave, but I need you to pick up, pull up one graph. I could, I didn't send it to you. It's buy new car versus buy used car. I want you to pull up that in okay. the 90 day graph, not the five year, but the 90 day. Cause I think it's really interesting how those two things flip. Uh, 
Ford. We're going to talk about Ford. And and we're not ignoring uh, GM for any reason. We've just been kind of honed in on Ford. Ford is 50% off its pre-pandemic uh, pricing. It's went basically from 10 to 5. Uh, there's a thesis that I have that says a lot of people are going well, – part of the big reason that when you buy a car is because you can get – a better car for the same payment. The way that you get a better car for the same payment is when interest rates are really, really low. Well, interest rates just went down to zero for car purchases for 84 months. Most of the new car manufacturers are going to be offering 84 months, 0%. What yeah. that actually means is that your payment, if you know that you can afford $375 a month, for three seventy five a month, you might be able to turn in your old car and get the same car brand new with all the new options, or you might be able to get even a nicer car. I also think that gas prices, um, you know, historically have been a driver of of car sales. So gas prices are really low. Ford truck sales, that is, excuse me. Ford is moving to away from all cars and all trucks. They're only going to be manufacturing trucks, right, moving forward. So they just happen to be maybe at the right place, right time to take advantage of record what will be record low gas prices this summer. Um, there's the payments will be so low for people they can upgrade. And also, are, is any are either of you all going to fly to vacation this year? Or are you going to drive if you do a vacation? Well, Dave, you might fly because you're crazy like that. I might fly if I take a vacation, but I'm I'm putting all vacations on hold until we have a little bit more clarity on what's going on in the world. Uh, I booked a vacation that I normally fly to every year in Florida with my family, but this year we're driving. Okay, Who's so drive, Chris. Who's a what drive? What Jordan? I said that is a very long drive. I'm stopping in like Jackson, Mississippi, and stuff. You know, so but but here's the thing. Uh, we, we did that drive when I was a kid, and it was the last time we ever did a car trip. We did the and, trip to Destin. And you know my family is the worst when it comes to that. <laughs> I mean, we can barely get along for five minutes. I don't know how we would do it. But <laughs> uh, I think there's just – I'm not saying that, like, Ford's going to have an amazing summer or anything. All I'm saying is that if people get back to life – I think that Ford has a chance to have a reasonable summer, a summer that is something worse than the worst case scenario due to the low interest rates and the basically free gas and the fact that nobody wants to fly. So you're going to drive. So maybe your car is a little more important. And again, the people that are getting all this extra money, a lot of them, I think they're going to think in their head, cannabis, electronics, computers and cars. Right. That's like that's what pops in my head when I keep thinking about this stuff. That's what they that's what they want. And, and there's one other, there's one other thing. We'll talk about it in a minute. Travel too. Well, that's a little crazy, but we'll talk about travel too. But I think cars, do you think it's reasonable that they can have a, a a decent summer, just a decent one? I think it's that, that I mean, the gas prices being negative. That I mean, that would be amazing if they would pay you to fill up your car. Uh, I could see, I could see uh yeah, I could see car travel having an uptick. I could see people with additional money in their pockets wanting to upgrade their vehicle, get a new one before they hit but the road. I could for, see for zero percent eighty four months. Wouldn't that motivate you, right? Like zero percent eighty four months. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get my next car by uh, by making this trade in Ford and getting a Ford, or <laughs> maybe I'll make a trade in Tesla because I think I'd rather have a free Tesla than a free Ford. Why not own both? They're two different markets, right? <laughs> so that, that's that's the thing. Like, I own Tesla because I think Tesla investors are out of their mind, and they're never going to sell their Tesla stock. And the second the market gets better, they're going to double the amount of Tesla stock. So <laughs> I don't even have to like Tesla. I don't like Tesla, but I own a ton of it because their investors are crazy like Jordan. So that's why I own Tesla. But <laughs> I own Ford because I think that... People, when they see that 0% 84 months and they see that like 375 a month, I can get that when I'm driving this. And like, I am going to drive on vacation to, you know, from Dallas to Austin, wherever this summer with my family. And the gas prices are so low, I wasn't going to get a truck, but now I can, maybe I'll get an SUV because gas is like 60 cents a gallon. I saw yeah. a Facebook post, it was like 47 cents a gallon at the station here in, at the Kroger that station. Was that in Dallas? Because I I then immediately got on Gas Buddy to see if that was real, and I couldn't 
I couldn't find anything less. Than it was it was it time. was it was our buddy Chris Walters. Uh, mm -hmm. He took the picture himself at a station, but he lives. You know, doesn't he live like in the deep deep? Where does he live, Dave? Up north of Denton or something? Yeah, yeah. So it might not have been Dallas, but it was like Texas. Um, so Ford. I mean, Jordan, am I crazy? No, I mean, I think it's pl plausible. Um, I think the worry is that, you know, how many people are not going to have jobs and then that's going to, that could affect car sales also. So I mean, there's pluses and minuses. Yeah, but we've talked about the whole job thing. Like, yes, 20% could be totally screwed with jobs, agreed. But And they are getting unemployment. And the another 20% don't have jobs, but they're getting unemployment that's more than they've ever made before. Yeah. And then, you know, the other 60% who does have jobs, they're also getting stimulus and a lot of their wives are getting unemployment or husbands are getting unemployment that met, didn't expect to be getting paid at all because they just were not planning to ever work or they might be retired and getting unemployment, right? So like, I think there's a tale of two types of consumers here and Ford does not have to do more sales this year than last year. They just have to do something more than zero sales, which is a lot, a lot of people worried about right now. Yeah, there it is, 43 cents. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, they've so, got to get their factory open, right? Because they, they need to get cars out the door. Yeah, and they do have that new Bronco and Bronco Sport coming out later this year. So, uh, a, it's a driver. It's a, a, a anytime you have something like that coming out, you can debate whether it's going to be great for the next three years. But for this year, like later this year, next year, it will be great. Like they will sell a ton of them in their first year. Uh, whether they sell a ton the second, third, fourth year is debatable. So. Um, Anyway, Ford. Ford. I, I mean, have I? I don't think I've made that trade yet. I, I was behind the idea of it, uh, but I have not made the trade yet. It's what four four eighty today or something like that. By the way, it's it's a pretty small trade for me, guys. I like it's not a big trade, but I think when I look at the risk reward, you know, other than having a major second wave hit the U.S., and we've talked about this, and in that situation, we're going to know when that happens. It doesn't happen overnight. Other than that, I feel from a risk reward, Ford has enough money. They have like what thirty billion access to thirty billion dollars, even though they're losing a billion a week. They can they can get through the summer. I think they can make it, and I think if they if they make it, I think they'll trend back up towards normalized levels, especially with these new models. That I think, listen, I think the Ford Bronco Sport and the Bronco are going to be uh, a real driver of sales for Ford in 2021. I think that's something to look forward to uh, if you're a Ford investor. They've had a, a hard time for the last two years rebuilding that company. I'm not going to say that I love Ford. I want to be in that company long term. If it pops up to 10, I'm out. I mean, I'm out. But uh, by the way, there's a little bit of risk in Ford credit, like the credit division. Uh, but yeah, the government's going to take care of that, right? Of course. <laughs> government's going to take care of everything. Have you heard the the latest proposal? Uh, you know, we, we've heard the potential, uh, what is it, $2,000 per month for six months that could be extended to 12 months. Have you heard the other proposal of just forgiving all mortgages? Just, you know, we're not going to make you pay for a year. Oh boy, this is insane. I can't I can't even comprehend that stuff right now. You're gonna drive me insane. It, it's it's so insane. Here's I, the I thing. Can't even, oh. I can't imagine how that would work or what that would do to taxes for the next 30 years. Here's the problem. Because you like, know it's not free money, right? A lot of us can pay our mortgage. Like I'm not saying I'm not talking about us. We could obviously pay our mortgage, but there's like a lot of us, like 60 or 70 percent of the country, that can. So like, what they, whatever they do needs to be smarter. It needs to be smarter to not like, because what happens is if you don't make the 70 percent that easily can pay them, they're still fully employed and they're getting stimulus. They don't pay their mortgage. What are they going to do? They're going to spend their money on other random stuff. So that's really unfair. You know what I'm saying? That they're the money's yeah. getting concentrated in areas where they can afford to pay here, but now they don't have to. It's just, it's, it's weird. Um, it is. Okay. We've talked about streaming before, but I do think it's worth discussing because it's such a big part of where the money is going. The money is going into streaming. No doubt about it. Netflix earnings are tonight, right? Yep. Uh, I, for one, don't think the Disney plus is a big driver for Disney and I'm not buying Disney because Disney plus has 50 million subscribers now. I don't care. Uh, I love Disney long-term, but I sold half my Disney because I 
just don't like it short term. Uh, Netflix is the obvious winner, right? I mean, and, and Roku, yeah. Netflix and Roku, right? I love both of them. I own both of them. Um, I'm looking forward to Netflix's earnings, whether it's good or bad, because I might want to buy some more if it if it comes comes back down to the 380 level. Look at this, it's just out of control. So here's the thing about Netflix tonight. I'm a little nervous, honestly, because I, I know they're going to do great. We all know they're going to do great, but how? Gr how great is great enough? I mean, it's really hard to understand the market's expectations for Netflix tonight. And like, what are people expecting? And is there going to be some, some somewhat of a sell-off? I do like Netflix long-term though, because what people don't understand is what Netflix needs more than anything else. They need to have these breakthrough moments that get the people that don't own Netflix a subscription to buy one. So okay. every time there's been a show that's been so unusual or so great that people just have to figure out how to subscribe to Netflix, they do it and a certain percentage of those people, once they're on Netflix, essentially never leave it. Some people hop off and on all the time, but Netflix needs to have those opportunities. And that's what we've seen every time they've had a breakthrough show, it's gotten them a new demographic. OK, so the pandemic is a way for Netflix to break through to people that have resisted, resisted, resisted. And finally, they're like, there's no sports on TV. There's no <laughs> like I'm sick of yeah. watching the news. Why don't we do the Netflix thing? You have to run through these scenarios. I think tonight's earnings will hopefully show that's a new breakthrough. And those people aren't going anywhere. They're not going to leave in a month. Some of them will, but a lot of them will stick around. And it's so, we, we say the same thing about Amazon, right? You've got to, what will it take? It takes a global pandemic to get a certain type of demographic to say, fine, I will order my groceries to my house. I never wanted to do this, but fine, I have no choice. I'm going to do it because I don't want to get sick. And then a certain percentage of them will do it forever, right? Uh, no, absolutely. And we see that we're in a high for uh, searches just for the term Netflix. And if we uh, look at up Netflix upgrade versus Netflix cancel, which doesn't really tell you that much, it does show you, though, that we don't have a big spike in Netflix cancel. It's trading within the range of uh, what it, where it would normally be. It's it's high. It looks like it was back in uh, March 22nd. Dave, I like the tag. The I call them tags ticker tags, call them tags from our old company. But uh, Netflix uh, subscribe is one that I often look at. And so, uh, you know, Netflix subscribe, is that, has that a three month? What are you looking at there? That's 90 days. Let me, oh, let me pull up you five gotta, years. Yeah. Um, so the Netflix subscribe is at an all time low. Well, did, down. did you uh, did you pull that right? Did you spell subscribe right? Spell yeah, yeah, looks right. I'm surprised because I thought in the past and I pulled that tag up, and it might be because I pull a global, not a U.S. Uh, subscribe on Netflix. S subscribe globally is trending up, and subscribe domestically is trending down. That really doesn't make much sense. Well, you're going to, so, okay, if you do subscribe, so you did something wrong. Okay, there you go. That's what I normally look at. I look at the global subscribe Netflix, and that's what you just base. It's a little different from what you pulled. I do subscribe net subscribe first and Netflix second. Um, it Do subscribe Netflix. This is just trying to uh, pull the chart to prove your point. Nope, and you, no, you, no, you, no, you got to do global. I, I, I do global. Okay, so you see that? I mean, that is a, and remember, most of Netflix's growth is coming globally, not domestically anymore. So well, that, most that's, of the searches for that are from the Philippines, Singapore, South Africa, Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, a huge, huge spike right there, almost unprecedented. So let's see, you know, let's see what happens with Netflix tonight. I'm in it. I did sell a bunch of my Netflix. I was in seven figures on Netflix and I replaced some of my equity with options to kind of lower my downside, but I still have almost the same position that I had before. Uh, just a different way of getting there with Netflix. Again, Roku is still strong. And by the way, I think Roku benefits if Netflix has strong earnings tonight. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about one more area uh, that's controversial. 
And I would never have thought this, but my GM, to give him credit, of my restaurant, Mike, I had this conversation with him last week, and he said, Chris, you know, uh, I, and by the way, uh, he his son is in, in, the, in, in, in the military, and I love it that his son invests as well and watch our show, which is so cool. And a lot of his buddies uh, in the military started investing, and that's so cool to hear that these young kids are getting involved with investing. But he told me, Chris, he goes, I think – that a lot of these kids, because you know they're not scared of of the Rona, right? They're they're not scared. They're not <laughs> scared of it, right? He goes, I think a lot of these kids are going to travel. Um, he's like, I actually think they're going to start traveling this summer because it's so cheap that most of the kids, not the kid, not the Instagram, not the Instagram kids who are out there traveling the world and other people's money and their parents' money and whatever, but like. Like the bulk of kids, like in their 20s, who just could never afford to travel yeah. for $99 can finally take that trip to the other side of the country and do something really cool or that trip to Mexico or that trip to wherever. Like he thinks that it's going to open up travel for people that ordinarily that are young and not scared that could have never done. And they're going to do it. They're just going to do it. Right. If it's legal, if it's legal to do it, they're going to do it. And it's interesting. It's an interesting thesis. I don't know if it's interesting enough to like buy the airlines, but, but does maybe- that help the airlines enough? It, like a ninety-nine dollar fare, even if you fill the plane, they're still losing money on that flight. Is that enough to at least pull their stock up a little bit? I th- I think I think it might be enough for maybe you know maybe like a booking dot com right or someone like that or uh, you know some. I'm just saying it's. If we're talking about where the money is going to go, to some extent, we can't completely write off travel. And it might be a certain type of travel, right? Because remember, Booking.com is Priceline, right? That's how it all kind of – that's like their lead main engine was Priceline. And they have everything else. They have Hotels.com running and all the other stuff. But uh, it's, it's an interesting thought, that the young kids are going to go out. Their cat, they have, they're they're flush with cash because a lot of them never had this money, and they're getting chunks of money from the government. They're getting it in chunks, right? And stimulus checks. They might spend. Some of them might choose some of it and go and travel, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Could be. I just don't know if that is enough to help. I mean, a, a booking dot com could uh, could definitely benefit if people are getting on Priceline to find the absolute. Lowest priced hotel. They don't care where they stay. They buy round trip airfare across the country. Maybe they're booking some of those package deals. You know, do, do, let me ask you this: Does Booking.com end up? And you know, I shorted Booking.com like literally from two thousand to fourteen hundred. But does Booking.com uh, get the benefit of having the hotels and people paying them more money in commissions to get bookings to them? Do they get more money in advertising because the hotels are so desperate to so get desperate people to, to fill a room? Yeah, absolutely. They, maybe they increase their commissions. Is that a thesis mm-hmm. worth exploring? Maybe worth uh, exploring. So I don't know. Listen, part of what we're here for is to kind of push, or you know, you guys as subscribers to to really think, to think differently, to explore things that maybe others aren't thinking about. And I think that's one that's it's interesting enough to look at. So, man, we had a lot here. That, that was, this, that is, was, this is a jam-packed episode. For yeah. me to go back and watch this and take notes about what I might want to invest in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I hope people walk away from today's episode with a bunch of perspective. Oh, man, I'm literally – you don't can't see this. Out of the corner of my eye, I got a 76 5-inch TV, and I saw it at, on CNBC and at the bottom – Amazon's only down 57 right now, Dave. I just saw it scroll it, across. It's making its comeback. That's good. All right, that's good. Anyway, uh, so I think, I don't know, there's a lot of opportunity. I think we're not the end all. Like, by the way, we're not financial advisors. Do not take this as advice what to buy and sell. This is what we're thinking about buying and selling. And in some cases, we already have. This is our thought process. It's about having a prepared mind. It's about the due diligence we do, the strategy. We want to teach you how to think about these things in a different way. Uh, but you make your own investment decisions, get investment advice as you need it. Your risk tolerance is different than ours, okay? Uh, that's our big disclaimer. This is education and entertainment. entertainment. 
Uh, we hope we hope it's entertaining, and if it is, smash the like button. It's not it's not supposed to be entertaining, but I think somehow it is for a lot of people. <laughs> we find it entertaining. That's we keep doing it because it's just too much fun not to. Yeah. Um, by the way, I want to do. I want to talk about a reversal that I had uh, from last week, and this is. I hate. Yes. I, you know, I feel so bad. We did all this research on FLIR, F L I R, last week, and we ultimately came. I ultimately came to the decision. I'm not buying FLIR because. They do a lot of stuff, and thermal imaging is just one piece of like what they would do. Yeah, and let's talk about it. FLIR is the company that makes thermal imaging, among other things, but thermal imaging that can, uh, at scale, scan people for a fever, right? Mm -hmm. Scan body temperature without having to put something on your forehead, just pointing it at you, and thermal imaging says, okay, yeah, you're 98 point, what, what's normal, 98 point? Nine, seven, 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 six, five. <laughs> no. At least you're not 105, right? But they, they, you could even buy them on Amazon for like 100 bucks. And I don't think you have to touch the head and it like shows a thermal deal. It's actually super cool. But I said no to FLIR last week because I thought, like, why not just use a $20 thermometer? I think buildings are just going to use the thermometer for 20 bucks. And like, you don't need all this thermal imaging junk. But then this weekend, Amazon came out and said that they were putting thermal imaging like walkthrough devices, I think, where every employee has to walk through them. And it just tells you like fever or no fever, fever or no fever. Made is rumored to be made by a company here in Texas that's private. There's one more company in Europe that does this stuff. And then there's FLIR, which is a publicly traded US company. So I started thinking about that. And you know, when Amazon does something, people follow, right? So yeah. That you becomes the normal when you have a an employer that has as many people as Amazon. If that becomes standard for for their factory workers, for their office workers, that that's a big deal. I'm all of a sudden thinking now, and I saw a quote. I think it was from Fleer or one of the other companies that said that they sold more whatever thermal imaging equipment they have, which is a very small piece part of their business. That they did more business do, of that than they had in the last five years, just in the last couple of weeks. So. I'm now starting to think that it was a major news story. Amazon's doing it. Every single manufacturer or, or manufacturing plant, people are like, should we get those? For, buy them now before they're sold out? Right? I yeah. think this could become a huge thing for the next year. And we could have thermal imaging stations where people just walk through at every company, obviously at every uh, airport guys, right? Could you imagine not having it in an airport? That's just common sense, right? Have thermal imaging be part of what, what they're testing you for when you walk through, if they don't already yeah. have it. Yeah. Uh, every sporting event, when the sporting events start to open up, you know, <laughs> you have to have that, right? So I'm starting to think that, you know, this is not unique to us. Like FLIR was up huge yesterday. I woke up yesterday morning. The first thing I did when the market opened is I bought FLIR and, the, and they went Thank up you. huge yesterday. Uh, and then I bought more midday when it was up like 10%, 10 or 12%. And is it is up more today, I think, isn't it? It's up a little here bit. Is, um, I bought some options. So let me see if it's in my list here. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Up yes. more today. Yeah. It's up no, it's, no, no, it's down $2. And no, that's. No, it's up. It's $2.77. Yeah. So here's the thing just, it's okay when you're an investor and you do your research and you come to a conclusion and then it's okay two days later to say, I was an idiot, I was wrong, I wasn't thinking about this clearly and now things have changed, there's new information. Amazon, that's new information. And I'm going to now change my thesis based on that new information. That's okay to do, okay? Um, that's something that I did right here and I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I wasn't like, okay, you know, I'm not, I, had my, I'm, I'm not stubborn and think I said no to FLIR, so I'm going to stay no to FLIR. I'm in on FLIR now. I'm an owner. Jordan, did you buy any yesterday? I did not buy yesterday. You got all my texts though, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> hey, I just saw that it had already moved. I was like, uh. Ah. Yeah. So uh, that's it. That that That's me and, and FLIR. Uh, gosh, is, did I miss anything in this episode, Jordan? I mean, like, God, we, I feel like I covered... We talked about Hasbro. We talked about Fleer. We talked about Peloton. Oh, I promised I would talk about. Uh, did we? Did we talk about crude oil going negative? I mean, we mentioned not yet. It, no, I, I got to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so, this this is unprecedented, and I'm trying to figure out if I can just take delivery of oil. 
So you know what's funny? If, uh, if yeah. University Park doesn't have any uh, have any uh, uh, you know laws about you know we don't. I don't have a homeowners association. I have a an empty garage. I think okay. they, they might come knocking at your door. Um. <laughs> Can I just say something here? Like like I, we live in oil country. For those that don't know, I mean it's Dallas, Texas. It's not as oil country as Houston or Oklahoma or Tulsa, but a lot of our friends live in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And you, like, we're in oil country, right? So I have a lot of oil friends and I spoke to a lot of them yesterday. I was on the phone quite a bit when this was happening, just trying to figure this whole thing out. And, you know, these oil, invest, these oil guys, lifelong oil guys, they don't know anything about oil, <laughs> really. They know how, <laughs> they, they kind of know, but they really don't know. It's amazing. And I then I then I tweeted about this yesterday last night because I'm like, then again, most in, investors, professional investors, don't know anything about investing. They're terrible at investing. I'd say 99% of institutional professional investors, mm -hmm. analysts, sell side, buy side, hedge fund, quant fund, 99% are complete morons. Okay, they don't. They're smart people. They're smart people, but they don't understand how to invest because the bottom line is, unless you're regularly beating the index over a period of ten plus years, fifteen plus years, you know you're not good. You're either good or you're bad. If you yeah. can't beat the index regularly over a long period of time, you're not good. I'm That's sorry, I don't care. The, the the, the thesis of your book, Laughing at Wall Street, is that these Wall Street professionals are not any better than individuals who just happen to be able to detect change and invest in it. Well, in that case, they're much worse. But in general, <laughs> they're just not good. And it's not because they're not smart. Actually, some of the smartest people in the world work on Wall Street. They're also, by the way, a lot of the nicest people in the world. I love them. A lot of them are my very good friends. Um, and some of them, there's a select few that I'm really good friends with that are actually amazing. And those are the ones I regularly talk with. Uh, but mm, listen, they're just, it's hard. Investing and beating the index is almost impossible, may I say, almost impossible. So oil people are the same way. They don't really understand how that market works. And when there's an anomaly like this, no one knew what the hell was going on. They didn't even understand anything about how to even trade a negative price like it doesn't make yeah. sense nobody does well, nobody does and cnbc was trying to figure it out in real time it was great seeing their oil <laughs> analysts trying to just like no talk through an event that they'd never seen before we'd never seen it go negative and they didn't know what it meant and it looks like it's up 45 but still down 121 percent which they don't even know how to display the graphic on tv <laughs> it didn't go negative it crashed through negative and then just kept Kept plunging down. I know so, we, we were watching it all day, going, "Oh, look, it's at a dollar fifty. Oh, it's getting really cheap." And so can I, can we end, quickly explain? Grown. Can we just explain for our audience because we do understand now what happened. The bottom line is those contracts yesterday; they're physical contracts. So if you are the last one stuck with the contract when it closes today, you actually have to take delivery. And ninety nine percent of oil traders and investors don't have the ability to take the oil at the end of the contract. So they want to go sell it like they normally would. But the people that are normally there to buy these contracts towards the expiration, like airlines and manufacturers and people that actually buy physical oil, they were like, actually, we're good because we don't have a place to put it. So <laughs> there's no place to put it. So I said, I got, I texted our little string, of, our little text string. And I said, guys, can somebody find me an oil tanker right now? I actually called our buddy Ryan Osborne, our big one of our big oil friends, and said, he, he can, you know, he... He finds jets. For, he sells private jets on the side and does all kinds of crazy stuff. I was like, can you find us an oil tanker in the next 12 hours that we can have accepting oil? Because we'll get paid $40 a barrel if we can find us an oil tanker. I gave him like a few hours and he couldn't find one. So I made a trade. I bought an oil tanker stock. That's what I did. I, I didn't know what I, What's their symbol? I didn't know what I was doing, guys. STNG. <laughs> Scorpio tankers, STNG. I bought options, actually. I did not buy the stock. I bought options. I'll tell you the options I bought. And I'll tell you how I'm doing. Um, oh, my God. Amazon's coming back, Dave. We're going to live another day, I think. Okay, anyway. Nice, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll here, look, look at Scorpio. It looks like they're taking off today. Okay, so uh, not really. They're only up a little bit. But uh, So I bought those options at uh, – I just uh, – I don't know what I – I know I'm up four thousand dollars. I'm up. I'm, they're at thirty-one thousand dollars. I bought them for twenty-six thousand dollars. I bought the STNG May fifteen, uh, twenty 
$20 strike price calls. Uh, they expire in May. I bought 50 of them. I did it for fun. I was like, hey, this is a once in a lifetime thing. I felt like I wanted to be part of it. Is that is that insane to say that I want to be part of the trade? I mean, <laughs> Even if I'm a little I lose... insane, but no, it's it's totally normal for you. <laughs> so it was probably a stupid thing to do. So far, it's up. I was thinking about selling it this morning. I should have, and it was up a lot. It was like almost like up 50% this morning. Yeah. Um, but you, I don't you know. Bought it, you bought it yesterday, and it was, you know, you probably bought these. In the money, I don't know where, where it was, but look at that. It's you're you're way above your strike. I, I, price. I'm up I'm up fifteen or twenty. I'm up twenty percent or something like that. Uh, listen, I'm just saying. Like the problem is, what I don't know is that is this tanker company are their ships already full and they can't even take advantage of this? Maybe. Like no. I don't even know anything about this industry. I have no idea if they could monetize what's happening right now. So. I might do a little more research on it, but the truth is I don't really have time. So I'm just doing this one for fun, but that's what I did. That's my first and only oil trade that maybe I'll ever do in my entire <laughs> life. So I'm buying some oil tankers probably for a 48 hour trade uh, and I'm out. So that said, Dave, that, that that's all I got. I hate not being able to see comments on my screen. I'm gonna- Well, to we have a ton of comments. I don't know if we wanna just try to read through some that are not on your screen. I can I can- I can't see any. Concerned. Like I'm, I'm pulling them on. If you go to YouTube, uh, I, I'm on YouTube now. On uh, our and then go to our stream. I mean, they're just blowing up. Look how fast they're going. Let me see if I can put some on. There. I hate that I can't. Oh. On. I don't know if we want to just. Uh oh, sorry. Some that are. Wait. I don't. I don't hear you. Um. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Could you pull some? Did you? I mean, they're going so fast, I can't even keep up. No, I did not call Dave Mike. Mike is my the general manager of my restaurant, Chelsea Corner. Uh, <laughs> I talk fast, so it might have sounded like that. See, the tool we normally have slows them down a little bit so we can actually pick one out. Up 7% today. Uh, hey, at 12, water, at 12. Yes, but not nearly enough research. It's up hey, 21%. Dave. This, it looks like we're, uh, we, we've created our own version of uh, Wall Street Bets here. <laughs> okay, so on Apple leading into earnings, Chris. Yes, I want to talk about that because Peter Klein at twelve forty one says, "What do you think about MRVL and the coming five G wave?" I love the coming five G wave. Here's the thing: I'm not. I don't know anything about MRVL. I know they're a five G stock, and I should probably spend more time. Uh, I, I did spend about one day researching all the five G stocks, and by the time I was done researching them all. I decided I just want to stick with Apple. How bad was that? I was like, I'm just, I want Apple to be my 5G five G play. Um, I did buy that 5G that uh, that REIT that does the tower. It's called Tower or whatever. You have Tower and I have Crown Castle. So we're both in well-known 5G Tower uh, REITs. Um, listen, uh, guys, I, I think I love 5G. I don't think 5G is going to get negatively impacted by this. And I think this is a great opportunity to get into your favorite 5G stock at a slight discount. I mean, I did. My favorite 5G stock is Apple. I, it's a slight discount. And I mm -hmm. and I went in deeper on Apple. Uh, what do you, you guys see anything interesting here, guys? I mean, it's just so many of them. What about uh, Lulu? Lulu Lemon's one of our uh, go-tos. Uh, Pedro wants to know uh, about that. Yeah, so we talked about Lulu in the past. Like, I have Lulu. I, I love Lulu. It's one of my favorite companies in the world. I think when we finally come out of this, Lulu is going to thrive because they're Lulu. Uh, you know, because they're, they're, listen, the Lulu is all about international and men's. And those are two things that got started before the pandemic. There are two things that will continue after the pandemic. Well, uh, look, while people that, uh, that have the, you know, their, uh, their athleisure stuff right now, they're, that's all they're wearing. So they're wearing it out. They're going to need to cycle up whenever they, uh, whenever they come out. Jordan, that's actually a great, great point. Um, they're every girl in the world is is wearing out their lululemon uh yoga pants and stuff right so <laughs> you guys wear your lulu pants and uh yeah you, listen there's not you want to be comfortable now right like you want to be comfortable you want to you're probably people are eating you know it's a comfort thing so athleisure i think is we're going to get the next big wave of ath athleisure is not dead the pandemic is bringing it back bigger than ever and lulu is my favorite play there uh yeah. 
There's a question about how I uh, chose my uh, option expiration on FLIR. Uh, I actually bought the stock. I misspoke. I bought shares of FLIR stock. I didn't buy the options. Me too. Me too. Because, uh, I, because I didn't know, you know, the earnings are coming up. I I, I didn't know enough about FLIR to, uh, to try to guess in time. So it seems like a company that over time, as they get more contracts, deals, sell more of their hardware, and it becomes a regular normal thing to uh, to walk through a heat scanner while you're going to a public event. I think that that becomes a thing that, that this company could do some good numbers in a longer term. Yeah. Someone asked about Jordan's pick because he's the conservative one of the three of us, and he already gave it. It's Home Depot. If you missed it, guys, uh, that was Jordan's pick, and I like it. I, I double down on my Home Depot. Uh, but we, he talks about that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. The Dave, chat on slow mode. I should have put the chat on slow mode. I don't know how to do this. Someone correct. Someone, uh, corrected us. And he, when, remember when I was telling you to pull up Netflix, subscribe, someone said Netflix subscription is a better search term up massively. Netflix subscription, subscription. not ne not subscribe Netflix. Oh, yeah, because ne they're looking for the subscription plan. Yeah, so, so like plans would be a good one. my bad guys, that's probably the tag I normally use. And I just got it confused in the moment and had Dave pull up the wrong tag. Uh, but Netflix subscription is one. Pull up a five, for those of y'all that want to look at it, pull up a five year chart on Google Trends, guys, and you'll see that. Uh, are there tax? Oh, someone that's for Leon. Uh, if Netflix doesn't smash their earnings, Disney is going to tank hard. Uh, that's probably true that's a really good comment uh who 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 put that out there that was a uh, jared spencer that i love these we we do these pair trades all the time where sometimes you can get trade cheaper with cheaper option premiums if instead of trading the stock that everyone's looking at for earnings that day you find something that will move either with or inversely to that stock based on information that a stock is going to release and you trade that stock instead um, I agree. I think it might be wise for, for those of us, Dave, like we're concerned about our Netflix. because We're so heavy in Netflix tonight. Yeah. Maybe we consider buying a levered put in Disney that if we if Netflix goes up tonight, Disney probably is not going to go up that much based on that. So maybe we can get out of those puts at a reasonable price. If Netflix gets crushed tonight for any reason, um, potentially that could be a big negative for Disney. Listen, these are all good things to think about. I'm not saying I would do them, but it's a good thought process to go through. Jordan, share your portfolio, please, or at least the top five holdings. What, what are your top five holdings these days? Uh, Amazon is Amazon. Uh, I've got... Um, uh, Apple, I've got... Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, Tesla. Yeah, I've got all sorts of stuff. So I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't go super heavy in any one thing. So while those are the heaviest, they're you know maybe twice what I have in other things. So they're not, you know, you're I just don't put like half my portfolio on like Chris does. <laughs> you're just, you're just more conservative with your allocations, basically. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't ever so like you know, I'd say one percent is uh, my base allocation and then four percent means that i really like it and then uh like five percent allocation would be a ton for me a so ton. never fifty percent <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm more than forty percent in amazon right now you see ten percent shopify if you add a zero to the end of everything that Jordan just said, that's basically how I allocate. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry guys, I'm catching up on comments now. Uh, do what do we think about? Um, there's, there's a little conversation going back and forth about Upwork and and the uh, you know the work at home economy. Um, I, it's you so know, confusing to me. you know, the work, seeing a delay version of you on this screen and Upwork, Upwork is okay. I, I'm not invested in Upwork. I think, 
I think it's not so much about work from home as it is about massive delivery right now. Like all the gig economy workers seem to be transitioning to delivery jobs. Haven't you seen that? Like they're all going to delivery because there's just ample volume of delivery demand out there and they can work 24 hours a day delivering stuff. Yeah. You know, for Amazon and pharmacies and grocery stores and Instacart. I mean, if you're a gig worker, you want to work, you can work right now. Uh, will, will Roku also react? This is at 1248, Brian Cruz, one of our regulars. Will Roku also react the way that you just described that Disney might to Netflix? Well, um, let's see. So if Netflix has a bet, yes, probably. Uh, Roku might be another kind of kind of way to, to, to trade that. But listen, that stuff gets kind of complicated. I probably won't do any of that. I'm just going to stick with my Netflix trade. And if I take a big loss tonight, I take a big loss. Uh, anything could happen, but I like, I like Netflix here. I just, I still do. Uh, you guys see anything? It's hard. ESPN, what do you think about the ESPN Jordan documentary? Do you think that's going to uh, move the needle at all for Disney stocks? Six million viewers Sunday night. That's yeah, from, so they uh, said Warren it. Rayborn. I watched it. I love it. You know, I love basketball. I love Jordan. Um, 40, it had 40% of the ratings of the NBA Finals, um, which is pretty big. I think ESPN desperately needed this right now. I'm glad they released it. It's it's uh, over 10 weeks or nine weeks, I think, that this is going to air. So this is going to keep cable providers kind of happy with ESPN for a little while at least. Um, I don't think it's like a big needle mover for ESPN when you consider everything that they've lost over the past couple months. But it's a nice little, okay, it's a it's a ray of light in an otherwise completely dark world of ESPN. Where well, I think it lets them know that there's appetite for these things, right? And so that when they do finally bring sports back to us, that there's going to be a ton of viewers, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. We all know that, right? When sports are able to come back, it will come back hard, no doubt. Uh, you, I'm not – someone's asking me about – my, my ultimate go LeBron or MJ it's it's MJ man here's the thing I and by the way I love LeBron you know what I love about LeBron and MJ they're both super smart man like they're these guys it's not just about basketball like they are smart they're good they're, they understand business I feel like they're Dude, both LeBron's a good person what so. LeBron's a good person. Yeah, LeBron's a really good person. I, I just I, – I, I, I love it, man. Uh, yeah, ESPN's owned by Disney, Aaron Lewis. Yes, for sure. Uh, do you have a sell target on your trades, Netflix, Peloton? That's a great question. We talked about this in the past. I want to be very clear about this. I actually commented about this this week to one of our subscribers. Uh, if you read the book – and, I'm, again, I'm sorry for not getting the book out. If anyone that wants the book, Laughing at Wall Street, you get it for free. I'll mail it to you. Uh, it's dumbmoney.tv forward slash book. Put your address. If you live in the U.S., I'll mail you one. The reason why I haven't mailed the books is because I'm so distracted by the pandemic and the market. I'm not sleeping, guys. I just I can't even break away. My family's making fun of me because I'm in this dungeon of a room, my trading room here, from like 7 a.m. to 7 at night. And then all I'm doing late night, I'm up till 3 a.m. researching. So it's not because I don't want to get you the books. I'm just, I'm just distracted. But our methodology, which we talk about in the book, is we initiate trades based on the discovery of game-changing information that the market hasn't fully appreciated or hasn't been fully disseminated to the investable market yet. We exit those trades uh, as soon as that information has been disseminated to the rest of the world or has been factored into the stock, right? Good or bad. It doesn't matter if the stock went up, doesn't matter if the stock went down. Um, when we feel we no longer have an information edge, then we're no longer in the stock, right? So we are in only in stocks where we feel we have a differentiated information edge where the investment industry in general is not fully appreciating the information that we're trading. Uh, as soon as that disappears, we exit. It has nothing to do with an exit price. So Amazon can go up to $3,000 a share right now. And I wouldn't sell because Amazon's at 3,000. I would sell because I feel like 
all the good news that I wanted to be an Amazon for is now fully appreciated by the market. And it's not totally based on price. It's based on that information getting released to the public. So if Amazon comes out and says, we tripled our sales and, and we're going to kill it for the next five years. And we like all this stuff. Okay, great. Now everyone knows what I knew last week. Yeah. Amazon could go down on that information. They can go up. I'm out because I have nothing new to offer to the trade. You guys agree? And that's no, that's that's absolutely true. I think Amazon's a unique case though, because that is kind of what we call our forever stock. It's it's something that unless Amazon came out and said, here's what we're gonna do for the next five years, it's not gonna get any better than this point five years from now, then yeah, the market knows everything. But there's no way that all of the information that's positive about Amazon will ever be fully disseminated because okay, it continues to get say, better and better. Now, you if you're in it specifically for the pandemic trade, that there, there is a time that all of the good from a pandemic that's going to come to Amazon will be out in the market and that that pr will be priced in and that's the time to, to get back to just whatever your forever amount of Amazon stock is. Yeah, but the reason why we call ever Amazon a company we probably want to be in forever is it's based on an assumption, right or wrong, that we doubt the market will ever appreciate Amazon the way we appreciate it based on the information we know and what yeah. we think Amazon will grow into over the next few years. So that's why, right? And, and the bottom line is if we sell our stock, it's not because we made money in the stock. That should never drive your decision. The fact that we made a bunch of money in a stock will never factor in to our decision to sell the stock. It sure. should. What you made on a stock in the past has no factor as to whether or not that stock should be bought at this moment in time at the current price with the current information that's available to the market. It and is a question that just came in. Will Amazon slow after the crisis is over? Would it be better to go with Tesla or Square after that? Well, you know, first of all, they're not mutually exclusive, but our thesis on Amazon, kind of like Netflix, is that the pandemic is a breakthrough moment that gets people uncomfortable to where they're going to do something like utilize Amazon in a way that they never used it before. And then they develop a habit. And once they develop the habit, that habit allows them to sustain that relationship with a company like mm -hmm. Amazon over a prolonged period of time. And then, and then that just kind of spirals and builds on itself. And remember, the reason why Netflix became so popular is because once enough people in your network started doing something, you felt that you had to do it. And then it kind of just crosses this realm of where you feel like you're missing out on something because you're not doing it. When every one of your friends and neighbors and family members is getting their groceries from Amazon Fresh or Whole Foods Delivered or whatever it is, and they're like, you're crazy. You're going to the grocery store. What the hell's wrong with you? Like when that happens, yeah. you get this almost like a peer pressure. So, so you have to understand that effect and, and the and way that it, it's like a network effect, but the way that it actually happens. And I see that. I see that. The other ahead, thing, Jordan. you know, people think that there's going to be a date that this is going to be over, and I don't see it that way. I see that, you know, people are going to have a concern in the back of their mind for, you know, months, maybe even a year down the road, right? And so at that point, you're going to fit, you're going to pick what your risky behavior is. You're going to risk maybe going to a park, but you're not going to risk going to, you know, a, a grocery store, right? And, and and can I just talk about groceries, guys? I mean, I got on the grocery bandwagon this last year. And it was like tippy toeing in, right? Like I, we didn't, we still go to the grocery all the time, but I have to say that we are kind of evolving to become full time Amazon group. Like we're now, like I don't see us changing. Do you see you guys like regularly going to the grocery again? I really enjoyed the process of ordering online. The, the The most difficult part right now is getting a slot to have a delivery made, either <laughs> Whole Foods or Amazon Fresh. You you just can't get a delivery slot because it's that popular. Although I I have a, a way to do it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a browser plugin you can you can install that that will keep pinging, uh, looking for a slot until you get one. Um. By the way, someone mentioned here is doing well, uh, which is what uh, the headphone company turtle yep. beach Plan, yeah yeah uh boundless that was like uh, a really tiny investment for me but I, I think it was a fun one and it made sense with the whole pandemic trade and uh yeah i mean i still own it i haven't really looked at it I'll, i'm gonna take a look at that every couple of weeks i'll take a look at that one 
Uh, Jordan, you know anything about this battery day? Leon, I, I think you told – Leon, when we had uh, lunch a, a couple months ago before this started, it was like the last time I met someone in person was Leon. Was Leon. <laughs> and I, I told him, I was like, I'm going in, I'm going into quarantine. I'm not, yeah. but, but I don't know – I know battery day is a big deal for Netflix, and I, I think it could be a pause. Listen, <laughs> what's not a positive driver for, for, for Tesla? Again, this is why I'm invested in Tesla – Tesla investors, they whatever you tell them, they're going to get excited about it. So yeah, if it's an event, it's probably going to drive the price higher. I don't have any insight into what they're going to do, or what I haven't, I haven't been keeping up on that. Um, I've been, you know, kind of researching other things right now, but uh, yeah. Uh, Crockett, it looks like it's going to be in mid-May. Maybe there's. Uh, it looks like it has been rescheduled for mid-May. Yeah, Crockett Cloudflare. I. Th- feel I've done a little research on that company, but now I can't remember. Aren't they like a security company, I think? They're the uh, the company that basically makes a copy of the internet so that a company's servers don't get hit every page. It's like a, it's like a cached version of a website. I don't, that's beyond my expertise. Jordan, could you look into that one for next episode? Cloudfire or Cloudflare? Cloudflare, I guess. I, like, I feel like you would understand how to value that tech um it's an infrastructure and website security company providing content delivery network services denial of service mitigation internet security and distributed domain name server service it's like they're like an akamai um yeah 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 Yeah, i don't know much about them current thoughts on uh blue apron i still hate it i I, i'm not i never (laughs) shorted it because i was waiting for it to pop up further again it did it pop up further uh Blue oh, Apron. Right. It's at eleven twenty. I I haven't shorted it yet. If it if it pops again, I might. I just I kind of have my shorts, guys, and I don't know if I went over them. I added some new shorts. Oh, I want to talk about that. I added some new shorts. Uh, I added. I would have been so upset if I didn't mention this. I added Ruth Chris as a short, and uh, we all know they got their twenty million from the government. I think unlike uh, the uh, burger place. They're not giving. What's that bird place is giving their money back? Uh, uh, Shake Shack. Shake Shack. I should know that. We love Shake Shack. Uh, they're not giving their money back. I think Ruth Chris is in trouble. So I had this friend John McCain who loves Ruth Chris. So I, I texted him the other day. I'm like, dude, tell me about Ruth Chris. What's what's the deal? And he's like, oh no no no, it, it, it's an expense account restaurant. He's like, I only. I would only go there if I'm traveling for business and I'm with business people and stuff like that. He's like, that's their main demographic. So like, I think of Ruth Chris is like really old people eating there. Like I don't, I don't like their steaks, but Ruth Chris has got to be in some serious trouble this summer. Like I just don't, I would think so. It's, it's a travel destination expense account, business dinner kind of place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know that I've ever been to one, but they're the, they're the biggest advertiser in American way magazine. And they seem to be only targeting that type of uh, clientele. Yeah. I think the time I was there, they had cloth seats, and I'm like, I'm never going back here. <laughs> Do they have they have wheels on the seats too? Yeah, they have wheels on the seats. They were cloth. I felt like I don't know. It was bad. All right. So oh, that reminds me. What's that? What's that uh, place that we do go to? Lowry's. Oh, <laughs> it totally they, is the uh, the upscale steakhouse version of Lowry's oh, to me. God, I hope Lowry's isn't closed. That will be a just Lowry's shame. is way better than Ruth's Chris. Yeah, I know. Well, it's prime rib. It's different. But okay, guys. I also I and reinitiated an old short that I made a ton of money on that I exited that near the bottom. I re-entered my cheesecake factory short. Okay, so I'm I'm shorting. Cheesecake Factory. I'm shorting Ruth Chris. I'm shorting Cisco Foods still. Uh, I'm still shorting Carvana. Uh, that one's not going that well, I don't think, at all. I've lost $17,000 on that trade. Uh, oh, why is that thing up today? Uh, I don't know. I think that they're raising money, I think, or something. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look into them. Uh, I'm still short American Airlines. Going pretty well. Uh, I might exit out. I might cover that one pretty soon. Uh, I told you I'm shorting Planet Fitness a little bit, and I'm still shorting, for sure, my biggest short, Dave and Buster's. Okay, but I do want you all know I added Ruth Chris to that whole thing. And Cheesecake Factory. Cake. Hold this down and put up the... Uh... I have so many windows open right now. Here we go. There's there's Ruth Chris' uh, chart. Hit a, hit a bottom, coming back. Uh, 
So do you see them? Do you see them really thriving you in this? Excited movement? about Bruce Chris and being like, man, I'm gonna plow into that and make some money. <laughs> <laughs> what Ruth Chris? <laughs> yeah, Ruth. Can go. Oh. Ruth Chris. Could you imagine that psychology? No, I. <laughs> I, you know, these Ruth Chris took twenty million. Like Shake Shack did the right thing; they gave the money back because, like, they had plenty of money. Ruth Chris, uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't take the money to keep their employees, you know, paid. Whatever, it's fine. But I don't think anyone's going to Ruth Chris for the rest of this year. I'm sorry. There's no business. There's no traveling around for business. There's no expense account business stuff. Ruth Chris is going to get destroyed, man. I think we'll see if I'm right. Uh, uh, by the way. I love how when we started this episode, my account was down a pretty big number. It started with a five, almost with a six, Dave. And now yeah. my account is only down with a number that starts with a two. So I'm down 280,000 today. So, uh, my account was down starting with a two, and now it's only with a one. All right. So I feel 111,000 at this point. I was a little shaky when we started this episode. I'm feeling a little better. I do have a, a hedge. I have a pretty significant hedge on the market. I, You know, I doubled down on my uh, spider hedge, uh, SPYs. I also bought some uh, diamond uh, puts yesterday. Not puts. I uh, just shorted them yesterday in the diamond. The, the Dow. Shorted the Dow yesterday, too. The, the, this is st I'm still net long. I think I'm actually more than 100% net long, but it took me down from like 130% net long to probably 95 to 100%, 105% net long at the most. Oh, it I had um, I had purchased some triple leveraged Nasdaq 100s in my retirement accounts, made money. But when things started turning, I got uh, I got out of those, so I'm back in cash in my retirement. Account. Okay, I was worried about that. Okay, good, very well, you good. You should have called me. I I would have done it sooner. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right, can we uh, can we like guys? If you haven't liked this episode, we so the thumbs up is so important for the YouTube algorithm. Before you leave today, please smash that like button. And yeah, uh, out of the more than 350 people watching right now, we've had uh, only uh, what 100 likes, 112, 15 likes. Come on, guys, give us Smash a like. Smash the button, please, please, please. <laughs> okay, uh, and and like I said, leave your comments after we post this video a lot. Uh, post this video, and we'll try to get to as many as we can before the next episode on Thursday. I don't know what we're talking about Thursday. We'll figure it out tomorrow. Yeah, we, we did mention, uh, I try to take notes when we're talking, we talked about maybe cannabis being a topic that we'll talk about at some point. We also just, there's so much going on in the market right now with, with the oil prices and with the, just the Dow down 500 points. Wait, a, when's Amazon earnings? Thursday, right? Is, is that right? Whatever the 30th is. It's next oh, week, right? It is. No, it's not this week. It's next week? No, next week. It's the 30th. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, we have uh, options expiring on the 24th. That was a mistake. Oh, <laughs> it's hey, okay. Hang on. Is that right? I'll, 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 I'll re-up re the options for next week. You know, what was that st was stock I, I texted you all about yesterday that I almost bought a million dollars of options by mistake? I was oh, one digit off. What Netflix? was it? Was it Netflix? <laughs> I think it might have been. I I wanted to buy nine. It was like ninety thousand, ninety five thousand dollars of options, and I got the digit wrong on the number of contracts, and I it went through the order. No, the order it my order went through Ameritrade, and it was sitting there. But it was such a massive order that the market maker <laughs> must have freaked out and didn't fill me right away. And I literally froze when I saw what happened. It took me one second to see it. I went back into the app and I couldn't, you know, in the Meritrade app, it's hard to cancel the order. Like it's not obvious how to cancel it. It took me like 15 it's or like 20 minutes to order was, to cancel. It was Netflix. Your text was, I almost accidentally purchased $900,000 of Netflix call options for earnings tomorrow. Just purchased 90K instead. Uh, <laughs> I canceled that um, order. Oh my God, that would have been that would have been insane. I, I mean, I you know what? I actually yesterday I think I heard CNBC reporting on a very large Netflix bet, like someone making a million dollar <laughs> bet on Netflix. I wonder if your order actually went through in the in like the 
ticker that they that they monitor for like making news stories and maybe they were reporting on a fake story which is you accidentally placing a million dollar trade dave dave i actually saw that exact story and it was like literally 20 15 minutes after i did that i'm pretty sure that could have been it i'm pretty sure that so, could have been so it. you made fake news out of a trade that you were able to cancel but they reported on because they yes. saw someone making a million so, dollar bet on netflix yes it, it, it yes i did technically put the order in but it did not fully go through on the wow. Meritrade side. They didn't get, it didn't get filled. It didn't get filled. So filled a quarter of it. What? None of it got filled. I canceled it None right. It? Like, so no, then I put another order in for what yeah. I meant to do. Right. But I wonder if that, that order went through as volume, even if it had, wasn't filled or something. I don't think because it should. Who else would be, who else would be making a million dollar bet on Netflix uh, at, at those kind of strike prices? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, well, I, I, I can't. I, I think that was you. I think that story was you. We got, we got to go back and see if we can find it, see the time, see if it lines up. That's amazing. Anyway. All right, guys. Uh, All right, thanks, that's going to do it for this for one. Watching. Yes, thanks for watching. Like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, listen to us on our podcast if you happen to be leaving the house and going on a walk and and want to uh, watch us while you're while you're doing that. Uh, what else do we have to say? That's it. <laughs> I don't even know. We'll see you next time. We're done money. We'll see you then. Thursday, right? Yeah, Thursday. 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 Thursday.